welcome finally to Kenya for the 18th edition of the World Athletics Under 20 Championships. Postponed for a year, this will be the second biggest athletics event on the calendar. And that's exactly why we are all so excited for all the action over the next five days. Well, this year's championships are taking place around 1,600 metres above sea level in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, which also played host to the World Under-18 Championships back in 2017. Nairobi is a city which prides itself on a vibrant athletics history and a population that loves track and field. Athletics really is a religion here. Well, this week, the athletes will be based just 12 kilometres from the city centre and only 25 kilometres from this, Nairobi's National Park, which is home to all members of the Big Five and is one of the most successful sanctuaries for black rhinos in the world. The National Park boasts the beautiful backdrop of the Nairobi skyline and is the only national park in the world which is situated in such close proximity to a city. Kenya is surrounded by the countries Somalia, Ethiopia, Uganda and Tanzania, but has the Indian Ocean to the southeast of it. And this Kasanari Stadium at the Moy International Sports Centre is going to be home for our athletes for the next five days. And when allowed, can host a capacity crowd of 60,000 fans. No fans, unfortunately, here this time, but myself, Rachel Stringer, and my co-commentator, from a world 1500 meter silver medalist, Hannah England, are on hand to bring you all the action, which started last night with this, the opening ceremony. Hannah England, welcome. Doesn't this look like an occasion I bet we both wish we were at Lord Sebco there, President of World Athletics on hand and the, the Republic of President of Kenya as, as well. It looks very exciting, very colourful, very energetic. Hannah, are you a little bit jealous that we're based in London and not in Nairobi? I am. It looks great. By all accounts, the, the local organising committee have been so excited to get this event going um, and you can see that here with the opening ceremony. And how tremendous for the athletes to get to be a part of it as well last night. I'm sure that was a lot of fun for them. I'm sure it was and this is exactly what these athletes, the youngsters, under 19 years of age, all of them will be loving to post on their social media accounts as well to, to let the world know they are here and ready to try and become world champions at this under 20 world athletics event. Well, this is the cool room just underneath the Casanari Stadium here at the Moy Athletic Center. And these are the men who are getting ready for the men's hammer qualification, which starts at eight minutes past nine for the Group A qualification and then 10.25 for the Group B qualifications. Only one athlete in this field has thrown over 80 metres so far this season. And it actually took over 80 metres at the last Under-20 Championships held in 2018. And that was Jake Morris of GB. It took him a national junior record of 80 metres and 65 to win the last edition of these championships. So these athletes are really going to have to throw something very big this year if they are to take home the title in this event. Turkey there and France will really want to be doing the business in this event. That's coming a little bit later, but let's bring you up to speed now on how day one of these championships is going to play out. 
out today. So we have the morning session, like I mentioned, kicks off at 9 a.m. with a very exciting event, the mixed 4x400 meter relays, making its debut here at this championships as well. And then that one will finish at 11.40 this morning with the men's 400 meter heats. That ends the morning session. But so much going on in there, as well as the, the women's heptathlon that starts here on day one as well. And those very exciting 100 meter heats from both the men and and the women so lots of action for you over the next couple of hours this morning and then this afternoon session kicks off with our first final of these championships at four o'clock it's the women's pole vault it's always an electric event that one everybody in that field event will love to have fun as we always see in championships in that event so three finals for you in the afternoon session in the mixed 4 400 meter relays as well that's at quarter past five and then finally your third and final final of day one is the men's 3,000 metres at 5.45. That's the first time the men's 3,000 metres has been at an under-20 championships. So we're very excited to see a little bit of history being made in that one because we'll have the first men's 3,000 metre champion ever to be crowned a little bit later on this afternoon. So we hope you'll enjoy all the action on offer today. And Hannah, how excited are you for this one? Unfortunately, we can't be there, but actually, you know what? We're kind of in a very warm room because it looks partly cloudy in Nairobi. 15 degrees, actually. I think London's possibly a little bit warmer this morning. That's not what you'd expect, is it? You kind of think, Kenya, it's going to be super hot, but uh, 15 degrees should be very manageable for these athletes. Hopefully we won't see any sort of adverse weather conditions um, as, as we move through the, through the events and look at those longer events. But um, it looks like a nice enough day there. At least they can get their, their shorts and their vests on and, and, and warmed up okay without worrying about that. But uh, yeah, it's been like, possibly is a little bit warmer in London. Well, at least they are not wearing any tracksuits at the moment because this obviously is the start of the mixed 4x400 four meter relays. And actually, these athletes have to wait for a while in their pens before their anchor leg obviously hands over to them. Their lead-off leg hangs over to them. So they actually might get a little bit chilly, so you might have to do a bit of warm-up um, whilst they're waiting for their leg to kick off. But this is heat number one then. They're getting ready. They'll just be kind of settling themselves in the blocks here and, and deciding their order, which looks like it's already been sided. And it... It's interesting to see that we already have a men and a female on the start there, which we don't always see because this has been running now since 2017. The first time we saw it actually was at the World Relays in 2017 in Bahamas and then at the World Under 18s. And we thought the order has been sorted by now, Hannah, with men, women, women, men. Doesn't seem to be the case from what I just saw there. I was going to say on the senior side, we saw a few countries mix it up a little bit and everyone has basically settled in to male, female, female, male. And um, that seems to be the established record. And, and, and I, I think that feels best to me, or, or certainly it works the best. You know, that, that's where you see the teams performing the best. You see some kind of uh, change their mind and change that order, and it doesn't really seem to pay off. Um, but here, perhaps we're going to see these junior, junior teams experiment a bit. Well, we will see what this brings today because this is the mixed 4x400 four metre relay heat. This is heat one. Jamaica then in lane seven for this one. Antonio Hansen will lead this quartet off. In lane number six, then the team from the Czech Republic. They've decided to go male female female and then a male on the leg four as well they have a time this year of 3 14 8 4. in lane five then india india are expecting a podium in this event says their national head coach poland though will be ones to watch for sure in lane four they of course are the reigning olympic champions in this event from tokyo just a few weeks ago in lane three is sri lanka Ishru Vans in lane one, leading off their quarter and finally making up. Heat number one of the mixed 4 by 400 metres is Team Ethiopia in lane two. On your marks.
Well then, while these athletes just settle in to their blocks for the first event of these world relays, I'll just elaborate on Team India then, because they've been at a two-week training camp in Patiala, and their head coach said they're really looking to perform in this event. Three automatic qualifiers from each heat, two fastest yeah. runners-up will qualify for the final later on this evening. And they're off. Okay, so let's see who gets out and makes a good start because these events are ran in lanes for the first 100 meters and the saggers are extremely big. So let's not really look into it too much though. But of course, we do have a female runner in lane two from Ethiopia. So she will be trailing at this point, but she'll be looking for her second leg runner, Adesu a male runner to try and bring them up to speed. But at the moment, as you can see, Jamaica with Hansen looking very strong at the moment. There's not much in it at this stage, like I said. But Sri Lanka look like they have closed down Poland. So it'll be interesting to see how they hand over Hannah and break for it when they've completed their first 100 meters. Yeah, that was a great first leg though from Sri Lanka. You can see now uh, all those female runners on the outside leg. We will have a male runner on the inside for Ethiopia, so expect him to, to really pull back these ladies. But you can see them breaking there um, as they will move out of their lanes for the first time. And it is Jamaica into the lead. Uh, their senior squad could only manage seventh at the Olympic, Olympic Games, but this junior squad looks full of running. So it's Jamaica in the lead at the moment from the Czech Republic, from India, from Sri Lanka, and then Poland in fifth place. And we're yet to see the Ethiopian runner back in shot. But the Jamaicans looking strong as they come into the completion of this second leg. See, as always, these relay, relay runners trying to empty the tank as they get into those last 30 meters and they can negotiate handing over their relay batons. And that's all gone smoothly there for Jamaica. Great finish, finish there for the Ethiopian runners, uh, really strongly into the line. I think Hannah, I'll expect Team Poland to be slightly faster because on paper they have the fastest time of 3.09.87. Let's see if they can make a late charge then on leg number three as it stands still in fifth place ethiopia really trying to put the accelerator down with their third leg runner zargo to see if she can bring anything back for her last leg runner azizi who's a male runner to see if he can do anything for team ethiopia but at the moment it looks like we have a complete standout leader at the front. Jamaica really trying to get back into this at the moment. India, though, as I said, really want a podium in this one and look like they could qualify in a really strong position to put themselves in the best possible lane draw when it comes to those finals a bit later on this afternoon. And what a fantastic leg off that uh, third leg run of Sumi from India. We look forward to seeing her in the individual event. But India out there at the lead at the moment. Kapil leading his team, but he's been chased hard. You can see strong runs there from the Czech Republic and from Jamaica already. And the poles always strong in this event. You can see Sri Lanka and Ethiopia bringing up the rear. But it is first three will automatically qualify for the final with the next two fastest times advancing. Looks like India looked good for the first qualification place at the moment. Yeah, so India at the moment lead off. Can Jamaica get second? It looks like they're easing down, but watch the poles. They are finishing really strongly. Will they overhaul Jamaica on the line? Yes, they will, which does mean Jamaica now will have to wait and see if they do advance to the finals. Are they the next two fastest? We'll have to wait and see from Heat 2. But India there, full of celebrations. And rightly so, they dominated that from the outset, looking super happy. So they've already had her taken their shoes off. They've had time to just stop, chill out, watch the rest of their competitors as well. The Czech Republic, though, very strong in second. A mention to that quartet, um, the anchor leg there, David Bix, very strong not to let Jamaica or Poland overhaul him on the line. But the top three will go through, of course, and that w we can watch again them leading off, which is always very hard to see exactly the positions they are because the, the staggers are so great in these events. But you can see there India already with a very strong first 100 meters from their athlete and then never let that lead go. But Jamaica there struggled, 
slightly in the middle of that relay and then they just lost it in the final 400 meters. I mean, lactic acid is always a problem in these events, but you can see on the, the final here, Utah for Jamaica just has nothing left in those final 50 meters. And then Robel of Poland just dips him on the line for that third and final automatic spot. But it is all smiles for Team India who take this first heat of the championships of the 4x400 meter relays in Nairobi. And they will be going through easily to those finals later on this afternoon. There we go, we can we can pause for a moment and just look at the scenes inside the Moy International Sports Center. Looks slightly gray over the back of the stadium because we mentioned earlier, it's a little bit chillier, only 15 degrees in the stadium today with a slight wind as well, seven miles an hour, um, but probably perfect conditions for running. Uh, that's exactly what the athletes will be after. Nothing too hot. I know at the Euro Under 20 Championships, only a month ago now, temperatures were very hot over in Estonia. I think they were reaching around 30 degrees for the beginning of the session and as the session ended in the afternoon as well. So very different conditions because a number of those athletes competing at the under 20s are here as well today. But now let's focus our attention onto heat two of this mixed 4x400 four meter relay and see who's in contention for this one, Hannah. I think uh, we've got a very strong Nigerian quartet on the outside in lane six, uh, some of which are running in the individual, particularly, particularly looking forward to seeing Opayemi Debra Oki. Uh, she's only 16 and she's in the individual event uh, later. So it's gonna be really interesting as we watch today unfold to see who takes part in this mixed relay event and who turns up later for the individual 400 meter heats. Cause it could be a really busy day for some of these athletes, a really busy week. I think it works out as the mixed relay heats this morning, the mixed relay final tonight the individual heats are also this morning so that some of these athletes could be running uh, three times today and then they can come back on Saturday and compete in the the single sex four by four and they're and uh, the final of the 400 on Saturday and Sunday so it's, it's a really busy schedule for these athletes uh, so it'd be interesting to see whether some nations have held back their stronger runners for tonight's final or whether they are just saying come on let's go run three times in one day yeah it'll be interesting won't it because I feel like this is maybe a slightly different edition this year because of all the problems we've, we've had. So maybe they won't have sent, have sent as such a, a great strength and depth of the team. So maybe, like you said, Hannah, some of the athletes might have to run a potential of six times over a 400 meter distance in the next five days. A very busy schedule for these athletes. Well, we've just heard then, we have a disqualification from Heat One from Ethiopia. You can see that the Ethiopian athlete is running on the white line, which obviously is not within the rules, but the athletes and the teams will have an appeal. They will be able to appeal that decision and get it overruled, but we'll have to wait and see for that. But as it stands, Team Ethiopia have been disqualified from heat number one. Now let's focus though our attention on heat number two. No, and a shame there for the Ethiopian team to, to be disqualified, but it's, uh, it's sometimes a learning curve at these age group championships, but we will look forward to this second heat now. But India then with a championship record of 3.23.39, the Czech Republic in second with a season's best of 3.24.17, and Jamaica taking that third and final automatic qualifying spay, split slot with a season's best of 3.24.69. Well, this then is the second heat of the mixed four by 400 meter relay mixed. We can see there we're focusing at the moment on the South African team. We've got five teams uh, to complete this lineup. And we start on the outside with the Nigerian quartet. Like I said, we're looking forward to seeing that second leg runner, but we will start off with Johnson, Johnson and Bami. He will take this team off. They have a national record of 313 set by their senior squad. 
In the next lane, we'll have the Italian team. This, their senior squad, squad did manage third place at the World Relay Championships. They couldn't match that at the Olympics, uh, but they have got good pedigree in this event as well. Grenadine going to be leading off that Italian quartet. Inside them, we will have the Kenyan team. Uh, they uh, will be very excited to get their home championships underway, I'm sure, and they'll be Kemu will be excited to be the first Kenyan athlete competing at this World Junior Championships. And inside in lane three, the South African quartet, Ryan Jordan will lead them off. And completing the lineup is the Ecuadorian team of Freddy Vasco, there, the lead leg runner. Excited to represent his nation. Looks like we've got all male leg runners on the first leg. So that will keep these guys even. Yeah, we will, we will know what's happening in this first leg. We should be able to watch that unfold, but then we'll have to wait and see who's going to run the second leg for these squads. We say it's a tried and tested formula, though, Hannah, but in 2017 at the World Under-18 Championships, Kenya actually did change this, and they did go with a slightly different uh, squad formation than, than we usually see. They went boy-girl, boy-girl, and it was Mary Mora on the third, fourth and final leg who actually came. She was leading it, and on the back straight, both... The other two teams, I think it was Brazil and Jamaica, overhauled her. Then she overhauled them again on the final straight to take the win in her heat. Let's see what happens here. And they're off Ecuador on the inside from South Africa outside them. And then Kenya, Italy and Nigeria is our, are our five teams in this race. They're vying for three automatic spots into tonight's final. There'll be two non-automatic time qualifiers. Currently, 3.24 and 3.26 uh, with Poland and Sri Lanka for those times. We'll see if these teams can overhaul any of those times. Focus on Nigeria on the outside here at the moment. Johnson and Bami looks like he could be in the lead, but as Rachel said, this is such a long stagger. We have to figure it out. Looks like a really strong run from Kenya there in lane four. They'll come into this first changeover and we'll get our first glimpse at the team tactics. Who are they going to hand over to? Well, there we go, Nigeria looking pretty strong, as do Kenya when they hand over to their second leg female runners. We're having to see who breaks first at the 100 metre mark. Kenya and Nigeria both out in front with a good five metre lead at the moment from the South African team in third, Italy fourth, Ecuador in fifth as it stands. But the two runners out in front really look like they have a strong lead and they'll, of course, be handing over to the third place runner who is a female athlete as well from both of these countries at the moment. It is Kenya in slightly stronger position than Nigeria. Both these ladies battling it out for Kenya at the moment, taking the lead, going to be in a very good position as she hands over to her third leg runner. Strong, well-judged leg, leg there by Sylvia Chalangat of Kenya. She hands over to Morara, another female athlete. It is all females on this third lap. But you can see there almost a second lead uh, from the Kenyan team. They made that all up in the last 100. They judged that really well, and they're holding on to that lead well. But you can see the Nigerian team chasing really hard. This is the young 16-year-old Opanyemi Deborah Oka. Um, like I say, excited to see her in the heats later. Uh, she's ranked one of the top athletes in the individual event, but she is chasing hard to see if she can make up uh, ground on Chamili of, no, of Moira of Kenya. Italy there at the moment holding on to that third automatic qualifying position. South Africa hunting them down in fourth place, but Nigeria, they have managed to close back that gap. A great run by Oki there to close up the gap on the Kenyan team as they look to pass over to their final leg runners. Yeah, they're working really hard here on leg number three, and if they were just to, to actually take a glance round, they'd see that these two teams are out in front and probably don't need to be running as fast as they currently are. Nigeria then, it switched from leg three. Nigeria take the lead by a second to Kenya, but Kenya at the moment are hunting them down on that back straight. Chamili there, the final leg runner from Kenya, having a stormer of a fourth leg. He takes Nigeria on that back straight there as they come into the final 200 meters. These guys really do not need to be pushing this hard, but sometimes they really like to put a statement down and say, you know what, we're a team to watch at the moment. And Nigeria are not looking to give this up. They are going.
to be taking this second heat from Kenya to take the honors and really put down a marker, like I said, and just say, you know what? We are a team to watch. 321.68 for Nigeria, 322.28 for Kenya, and Italy take that third and final automatic qualifying spot in 328.01 from South Africa in fourth and Ecuador in fifth. So we'll have to see who then makes the two extra qualifying spots to make it through to the final of these mixed 4x400 meter relays a little bit later on this evening. But we do know our automatic qualifiers and Nigeria there looking very happy with that result. Their quartet then, Ajayi was on the last leg who was not going to give that up to Kenya for anything, he wanted the top spot from that one. And Chameli of Kenya, he did a really good job, though, anchoring the Kenyan team home as well. They're very strong. We can see now, though, Team Nigeria setting off really well. It was Nigeria and Kenya who were never in doubt as well. They got out of the blocks really strongly, got into their stride, had great running, looking really strong on the back straight as well from Narmani, and he did a great handover, leg to their second place athlete. They went obviously male, female, female, male, as every single team decided to do, Hannah, in this second heat. And that was a really smooth changeover from all of those athletes. Again, such a disappointment to see that disqualification for Ethiopia in the first heat, but looks like these teams negotiated it. No trouble. And uh, you're right, they were not giving anything in this last lap. Uh, Chamili really wanted that lead of 200 meters to go, but it was um, Ajayi who came back really fast in the last 100 meters. But he's another athlete I think we're going to see in the heats later. <laughs> Let's hope he saved enough in his legs to make it through those rounds as an individual as well. But sometimes if you're a born competitor, there's nothing you can do and uh, they really um, stamped, stamped down their authority in this race and the 321 there for the Ni Nigerians was two seconds faster than the Indian squad and they looked so impressive in the first heat so potentially they wanted to put, put down a bit of a marker to make sure everyone's paying attention to the Nigerian team and they should be to that Kenyan team as well because that was a great result. For most of these athletes it could be the first time they've even put on an international vest so we'll be really trying to perform for their country of course as well. It's a chance to shine on the international stage for the first time for many of these. So a win in the heats is very important. But let's get a result then, confirmation of exactly how both of those heats unfolded in the mixed 4x400 four meter relay. We know it was a winner for India in heat one and a win, a convincing win for Nigeria in heat number two. A disqualification, like we mentioned, from Ethiopia in heat number two. They can obviously go for an appeal on that one, so we'll have to wait and see how that unfolds later on. But they don't actually have too long to do so because the final of this event is at 5.15 later on this afternoon in this afternoon's session, nonetheless. So a lot of 400 meter running on day one. But we're looking now at the beginning of the women's heptathlon. That's starting as well. 9.25 is the 100 meter hurdles for these ladies. I mean, it's always great, Hannah, to see the women's heptathlon start on day one. Loads of action, seven events, of course, for these females to contest. Only eight athletes in the world under 20s, which I'm gonna say is a chance for a lot of these ladies to really put their marker down on a world stage. It's been really nice to get to grips with that field, but at the moment we do have the men's hammer throw. Thomas Ratajic here getting his competition underway. This is just the qualifying rounds of the men's hammer throw. They will be looking to get a feel for the stadium, get a feel for that circle. Pretty good conditions. It looks nice and still nice warm temperatures. Simple first round throw there for the Polish athlete. The pole's so, so, so good in the long throws and the heavy throws. Thomas Wright, Wright Jig there. He has a PB this year and a personal best, personal best of 76.83. So let's see if he can produce something similar in his first round. 
So a no throw for Thomas in round number one, which isn't the greatest of starts though, Hannah, because surely you want to put something safe down as well for your first row just to kind of calm those nerves as well because there'll be a lot of pressure on these athletes to perform absolutely and it's um 74 meters would get you automatically into the final so as you look at uh Korotikov from latvia that, that is above his personal best there will be some more athletes that will make the final they will take 12 through uh, but for some of these athletes 74 should be a, a, you know sort of an easy training day for them uh, so you're right you would want to try and knock that out of the park on your first round throw to settle those nerves. Nicely done then for the Latvian athletes. Group A of this men's hammer. I'm always in awe of the strength of these athletes. It's such a technical event as well, which Hannah, as you and I are both track athletes, I've never been in a hammer cage and, and thrown a hammer. I don't really know how it feels to, to be that powerful. But Korotovs, like you said then from Latvia, was going for his first throw there. But let's go back then to this first heat of the mixed four by 400 meter relay. So we're just having a look now. It's super close there, Hannah. We're looking at that white line there to see if the athlete does run on it, is the foot placed on the line? That's what we're looking at there. From your point of view, what did you think? He has stepped on the line, which is such a shame. And you, you think uh, you, these athletes, they have experience. Obviously, they're accomplished athletes. But unfortunately, it looks like another disqualification there in this mixed relay event, which just the, the Nigerian team were the first over the line anyway. Championship record, 321.66. The shortest lived championship record from the Indian team in the first round. And Italy there getting the second place. Uh, so congratulations to those for making the final. It's a learning curve, though, isn't it? These junior championships, that's exactly why they are here as well. For these athletes to learn to progress to the senior level. But we can see then all the qualified athletes who you'll be seeing a little bit later on in the mix 4x400 meters final. Nigeria, the fastest time, 3.21.66. Followed by India, 3.23.36. And the Czech Republic automatic qualifier as well. Great to see the athletes going so fast this morning but these are the scenes inside the stadium it's so unfortunate that we couldn't have fans this time out because we know how much athletics means to kenya to nairobi to the culture it's such a way of life over here Well, then this then is the start of the women's heptathlon, the 100 meters hurdles. Koishak, the 16 year old from Croatia. She's the youngest in this field. She goes in lane one with a PB of 13.48. Enuk, she was fifth at the recent European under 20 championships. Suks from Hungary. She goes in lane three. Vaninen, she is the European under 20 champion. She was crowned that only in July a few weeks ago. Kai Huko, she goes in lane five. She's the second Finnish athlete. There's two fellow country women in this one. And Craner. She goes in lane six from Austria with a PB in this of 14.57. Mukohobrod in lane seven. And then we have the Lithuanian athlete goes in lane eight, the PB of 14.47. This is the first event then in the women's oh, yeah. heptathlon, the 100 meter hurdles. Vanen, she's leading the charge, of course, in this event as the reigning under-20 champion. She's the Finnish under-20 record holder, but we're looking at Craner there in lane six. The Austrian, PB of 14.57. Let's see 
who can get their women's heptathlon campaign off to the best possible start. Looking at Vanden in lane five, of course. She gets out of the blocks really well, as we'd expect as well. And Koishak, the 16-year-old, going strongly in lane one. It looks like these two so far, what's going to happen on the last side? Oh, we have a faller as well, but it is Vanden from Koishak, the 16-year-old from Croatia, one and two in these 100-meter hurdle. Let's see exactly how that unfolded, but it looked like job done for the Finnish athlete and her countrywoman, you can see just behind her as well. Kayuko, she looked to be running strongly in that one. Okay, let's see how they get out the blocks on this one, Hannah. Get great to get a look at Vanninen. Uh, doesn't she look full of running? Such a dominant European junior uh, champion. Um, so Finland have a strong tradition of medals in this event, in the World Junior Championships, but they've never got a gold. And you're looking at her in this first event and thinking, Vanninen is the woman to take that gold medal. And so unfortunate there to see a four for Sophie Craner of, I think it was Sophie Craner of Austria in lane six. No, am I looking? Oh, yes, I've got the, it was the other Finnish athlete. So that's a shame there for her to start her competition off that way. Uh, but Krakow would see if she still attempts the rest of the events. Yeah, I think it would be a shame not to. I think we saw a couple of athletes at the European Under-20s who did have misfortune in the first couple of events and then opted not to continue with the competition. But again, at this stage, maybe it's a chance to, to get a few events under your belt on a, a world stage and, and see how you perform as well. But Valenin has a PB set. In Estonia, only a few weeks ago in this event of 13.55, the fastest in the field. Second fastest in the field, it's actually the young 16-year-old to the Croatian with a personal best of 13.48. But these girls still look pretty happy, full of smiles, waiting to see the results of this event and what it means in terms of points as they continue in this competition. We'll be seeing a lot of these ladies over the next few hours. So then they go to the high jump, which is a little bit later on at quarter past 10. That's their second event of the morning. But Vanin then, she's the fourth ever ranked on the, the Finnish heptathlon record now in terms of seniors as well. So, you know, what a feat there for the young Finnish. And she's, of course, the Finnish under 20 record holder in this event. And Hannah, it was only a couple of weeks ago that she added 400 points to her PB. She went over 6,000 points for the first time in Estonia at those European under 20s. What's a massive PB for this youngster to, to get ahead around to cope with as well? Yes, that would have been so exciting for her. And uh, yeah, I wonder, she's probably not had much time to do much training between uh, between the European juniors and this. She got to recover, but mentally to come back and try again. Hopefully she's just on, on cloud nine if she's running off uh, kind of reacting to that wonderful PB. So we will go back to the men's hammer now. I think it's Jean-Baptiste Boussel of France. So he is our number one ranked thrower in this field across the two groups. Um, he was the third at the European Junior Championships, but arguably he was winning until the, the third or fourth round, I think, and then slipped down into third place. I'm sure he'll be wanting to get redemption here this week. But that looks like right on that automatic qualifying mark of 74 metres. So I, I think the French athlete will hope to be one and done. You'd hope to get that qualifying mark out of the way in your first throw. But with that season's best and personal best of 80-94, um, he's been twice over 80 metres this year. I think he would, he would see himself as the favourite, I'd like to think. But um, I think the European Junior Championship, da Ju European Junior Champion, David Pelé from Poland, um, he might have something to say about that. Absolutely. Well, let's now look at the athlete from Romania then who is now going to attempt a throw in this men's hammer. Six kilogram hammer throw, of course, for this athlete. Christian Mess, PB of 70.23. That's his lifetime best, of course. This is his 
first throw then in this first round. Yet to place a distance on the board because he had a no throw in the first round. So again, this is his second attempt. This time he just needs to maybe take his time. So obviously just going into that hammer circle and just giving a little sweep, leaving nothing to chance for this second attempt because you really do not want to go to your third and final attempt and really have to make something count. So this is possibly a chance for him just to, to get a marker down, to really get himself into this competition, to give him a bit of breathing space in his third and final throw. as he let go of that six kilogram hammer. Yeah, leave that to the track judges to have the ultimate say. And a little bit unbalanced as he released the hammer. So that was his second round throw. He does have one more attempt at that qualifying mark. Automatic qualifying mark into the final. Yeah, that didn't, didn't look great then from the Romanian, but we'll have to, to wait and see another foul in his second round throw. Very disappointing for the Iranian athlete Meha, but we'll have to wait and see if he can pull something out of the bag in round three. But Imanez now of Spain, first attempt of 71.05 for him, looking for 74 to progress, or the best 12, of course, from the two qualification groups. Much more balanced from him, Hannah, in this one. Sails nicely over the 65, just under the qualification yellow line there, which makes it nice and easy for us to see. And you guys at home, he gets the white flag. That's what everybody wants to see. I'm always so interested when I'm watching the hammer throw, the speed. You can see him and there's here. So much speed before he releases that hammer. Got a personal best of 73.13, which you think if he can get round about that, that would get him into the top 12, into the final, which will be Friday evening. And he's got one more throw to try and improve his throw. We move back to Sebastian Tomasi of Argentina. He's had a foul in the first round. Before that, we're going to head back to the track. Heading back to the track, we are indeed, because this is the start of the women's 100 meter heat. That is the next event on track at the Moy International Sports Centre in Nairobi for you. This is always a fast and furious event from these young women on track here. So I'm excited to bring you this first heat out of five in the women's 100 meter heat. is heat one of the women's 100 meters see though inside alonso to of, of, of dominica republic with a personal best of 11.65 one of the fastest in the field we've also got oshantanki of lithuania armuchu of turkey and camille rutherford of the bahamas she's got uh, she's ranked number two out of all of the entrants today with a personal best of 11.32 She's joined on the outside by the Botswanan and Milachi of Romania with a personal best of 11.60. So these ladies are looking for the first four automatic time, uh, qualifiers into the final. We will take not four non-automatic qualifiers. They'll have a semi-final uh, this evening and that final on Thursday night. So busy couple of days for these athletes if they want to contend that final. So Tejada on the inside. Oza Chaskate on the lane three, Armuchu lane four, Lagrange lane five, Rutherford lane six, 
Keller Pale, Lane 7, and Malachi, Lane 8. No, I think that's a really strong start from Camille Rutherford. That's what we expected to see from the Bahamian, but she's been pushed on the inside from Pajada from Dominica and Public. But it will be Camille Rutherford easing through the line slightly. 11.60, very respectable time uh, for the first round of this women's 100 meters. But, uh, looking after business there, the Bahamian athlete. Very much looking in control and comfortable when you can ease down the line in the heats of a world championship you know you have confidence she's just walking back there looking like she knows she's got the job done in 11:60. her time obviously she has a personal best of 11:32, so she knows she can go faster but look at the drive the concentration on this young athlete's face really in control Coming under a little bit of pressure from Malachi in lane eight, the Romanian, but never really troubled. She knows it, number ones as she crosses the line as well to say, you know, I'm putting a statement down here. This is one that I've come here to really grab by the scruff of the neck in this event. Well, and she was uh, the winner at the under-20 North American, Central American, Caribbean Championship. So she's had a little bit of a taste of success already this season. Uh, but you can see that confidence there across the line as we head back to the men's hammer throw. Yeah, we're still seeing if the four men in this competition can get throws on the board. But Sip Sacks right now. He just threw. He got 64.35. Embersich then is the next man to take to the hammer circle to see if he can post a time in this men's qualification. Jan Embersich from Slovenia, of course. So PB of 71.72. Again just needs to take his time get his balance he's practiced this so many times at home and in other competitions there we go nicely done for emesic from savinia walking out can't really tell what he thinks of this one have to wait and see exactly how far he threw then Got a bit of strapping on his left knee. But this is something that was not super uncommon from these athletes to have a, a few bits of tape here and there. He walks back out to wait his next round throw. Get a mark for you as soon as we can. Okay, next up. Into the cage. prepping themselves before they go into here. Thomas Reitajic, of course, this is who we have up next, 76.83 PB. He's still trying to get a throw on the board as well. Emersic there, 67.68, currently in sixth. Reitajic is still looking for his first mark to be recorded in this competition. A foul in round one was not ideal, but will not be traveling the pole at this stage. He knows what he has to do. He's seen the athletes go before him, and post some really good qualification distances. He'll be after one himself. A nice throw there, well over the 65 meter mark, not quite reaching that yellow line of the automatic qualification mark of 74 meters, but we have mentioned it, the top 12 can go through. So if he's very much within the top six in Group A, we may see him feature again in the final later on in the week. That's what he's looking for. It's not always based on the standard. They set that just as a benchmark for these athletes. But you know, if they don't get it, 
doesn't matter. They can reset and they'll go again in the final and, and try and get over those 80 meters, which seems to be the mark which gets you medals when you're here at this top level competition, such as the World Under 20s. No, absolutely, and we uh, they will hope to get that 74 metres, get that automatic qualification and not worry about it. But some of these other gentlemen, they will have to wait for Group B, uh, which is you know another hour and a half away until that big Group B will conclude to see whether they've done enough. But we can see Ratiuk there with uh, 69.43, so he has got a mark on the board, and, and that's a, that'll be a great relief for him. But we see Korotkov of Latvia. He has got a good, uh, valid first round throw in there with that 62.36, but he will be looking to improve that. Personal best of 70.32. And again, just losing his balance there. As he, it has, it is a valid throw, it is in the sector, but that'll be it's way down on his 62.36 from the first round. A lot of these athletes, they, they've, they've travelled a long way to Kenya. Uh, they would have trained in unusual circumstances as they prepared for this. Uh, perhaps a little bit rusty there for the Latvian. He's got one throw yet left to try and get into Friday's hammer throw final. Well, two athletes over three athletes over the automatic qualification mark at the moment which is great for those three athletes of course they will be sailing through to the final but let's bring you the results from round one of the heptathlon the 100 meter hurdles Vananin, she takes the lead 1036 points for her koishak 961 points and anouk 939 points to her name heading into the second event the high jump well now it's time to bring you the second heat to the women's 100 meters of fuku then in lane two from nigeria second in the nigerian under 20 championship this year pb of 11 50. check on in lane three Wada, four, and then we have here Kleiman in six from Finland, PB of 11, 66. Osifti in seven from Turkey, and in lane eight, Carissa Hill from Jamaica, the fastest in this heat with a PB of 11.43. So very much the Jamaicans to win and lose from lane eight from the outside, of course, but closest to your screens. Only 16 years of age as well, the Jamaican is. She's actually the Jamaican under 20, 100 meter hurdle champion. So goes well over the hurdles as well. Let's see how the second heat unfolds. Then we know the time to beat 11.60. And they're off, and lane number one, Fuku, looking really strong, as does the athlete from Finland in lane six, and Kerasil from Jamaica, though, will take this one. Oh, dead heat, photo finish there. We'll have to wait and see if it was Nigeria in two or Jamaica in eight. Both of them know how tight it was. Go over to congratulate each other in this one. Wow, that is as as close as they come. Nothing like heat number one, where we had a standout winner in that one. Okay, we'll see who gets out fastest. It was Nigeria looking really strong. Has a little bit of a wobble as she comes out and really gets into her stride in lane two. The athlete from Finland looking really strong, but it was Jamaica who just came really strong towards the last 10 meters or so to really put a blanket over those two from opposite ends of the track here. They really couldn't see what each other were doing, but I'm sure they'll both have seen a flash of yellow or a flash of green um, going past them and going, oh, I have company here. So we'll have to see exactly who got that one. But both of them, of course, will be going through because it was the first four in each heat to go through. So regardless of the result, 
I'm sure they both get a good lane draw in the semi-finals. Three of those coming this afternoon for you to enjoy. But let's bring you the results then from heat number one, Hannah. So we did see a much more dominant victory there in heat one from Camille Rutherford, 11.59. For Mahalic, 11.71. Alonso Terjada, 11.75. And Oza Chudenskaita, 11.88 from Lithuania. The final automatic qualifier. The rest of the athletes will have to wait for those non-automatic qualifiers times so 1188 then is the benchmark 1202 was fifth in that heat so we'll have to see if anyone's under that 12 second that's what they're looking for at the moment 1202 so keep your eyes peeled for times in that range So we've had two heats so far from the women's 100 meters. We have three more to bring you as well. Heat number three will be coming up in a short while. Before we have the semi-finals this afternoon, they'll be brought to you at 10 past four. We've also got, not only have we got the men's hammer throw going on, but we've got the men's shot put going on down on the infield as well. This is Group A of the men's shot put. Uh, they'll be looking for 19.20. That will get them automatically into the final, which is Thursday evening, so just tomorrow evening. But we've got Group A here getting underway, and we'll have Group B going at the same time, so they'll live, they'll know, know who's in contention for that final. There will be 12 performers that will make it through to the final. You can see the men prowling around the infield. Well, the story really from this one, Hannah, must be Kosovo because it's been such a great feel-good story now since the Euro Under-20s when Mohamed, Mohamed Ramadini, he won Kosovo's first ever gold medal at a European Championships. I'm sure he'll still be riding that wave, but this is Juan Carly Gomez from Cuba. He's the only athlete that's ever gone over 20 meters in, the, in his lifetime. That unfortunately wasn't this year. That was 2032 though from last year. But this is the South African then on your screen, DJ Libenberg. He has a PB of 19.09, again, creeping up ever closer to that elusive 20 meter mark which all these athletes will be after because that's something just to put next to your name if nothing else yes i'm a 20 meter thrower in this event he's looking like he thinks it's his go first here <laughs> he is order number one he knows it's his go first so he's just waiting to be given that green light to walk out and try and produce something special in his opening account at these championships. And Lindenberg is looking to get this men's shot put competition underway and you talk about that 20 meter mark, but Ryan Krause over this 23.30 to win that Olympic title in Tokyo. Uh, just looking so strong, I'm sure all of these guys will look up to those seniors and the distances that they're hitting. But we are underway in this men's shot put competition. That's a solid throw there from DJ Lindenberg of South Africa in this men's shot put competition. He's in Group A, like I said, Group B are going to be going on at the same time. Um, so whether they'll pay attention to that or whether they'll just focus in on that automatic qualifying mark of 19.20. Really strong throwing from the South African. Just short of that automatic qualification line, but not to worry at this stage in the competition. Hannah, you mentioned the Olympics and Ryan Krauser, and I hope we get to see the friendship that we know builds around these field events in this under 20 championship. 15 meters then the distance for Leibenberg in his opening throw of these championships. Vasquez Gomez then just chalking up his hands, readying himself as he is second to throw in Group A. So Leibenberg then just chatting to what looks like his coach then from South Africa. Just giving him a little bit of a debrief, he's nodding. No emotion on his face, but I'm sure 
good, strong start. 15 metres to start his campaign. Aske Gomez then. Next athlete who's going to take to the circle here. Age 19, like so many of these are. Personal best, 20, 32. Ooh. Slightly under. The qualifying standard of 1920 is automatic. Again, like in the hammer, the top 12, though, will progress to those finals. Strong throw there from the Cuban athlete. Slight nod of the head. Doesn't look as happy as possibly we've seen him before. I'd like to have seen him with his PB in that event. I'm sure that would have been something special. First time over 20 meters. I'd love to see any of these athletes reaction to that. 1882 then for Get Vasquez Gomez in his opening attempt. Sits nice and pretty at the top of the table after two throwers. So we're back over to the women's 100 metres. This is heat three. See Melissa Geschmutt there as Switzerland. National junior record of 11.47 to come fourth at the European Junior Championships. Of course, Island Dupont running so well on the senior side. Great to see the junior as well. And Tima Gobless in Nigeria, a personal best of 11.48. So a very strong runner in lane five. Yuchenko to her outside. Mercy Chibet of Kenya, personal best of 11.60 for the home athlete. To her outside in lane, back, lane eight, we've got Beatrice Masalingi of Nambia. She's got a personal best of 11.38, but only a season best of 11.79. To complete the lineup is Charlize Eliard of South Africa there on the outside. This is heat three at the women's 100 meters. First four oh, automatically gosh. qualifying to the semi-finals. Dewan on the inside, Persian of Finland in lane three, Geschmidt of Switzerland in lane four, God bless of Nigeria in five, Yachenko, Ukraine in six, Chibet, Kenya in seven, Masalingi, Nambia in eight, and Elad of South Africa in lane nine. Six. Strong start there from God bless in Nigeria. She's got the lead at the moment, and it's Masalinga on the outside of Nambia. Masalinga coming through. Masalingi will take the victory from God bless and from Gushmut in third place. 11.25, a personal best for the Nambian athlete. What a way to start off your World Junior campaign. Second place for God bless, third for Gushmut, fourth for Persin, Persin, Persinen of Finland. Masalingi there. I mean, look at her style as well. Very different from the other athletes. Really high knees, really working away. That's obviously what gave her the edge out there. Geschmidt then from Switzerland. See her just settling into her blocks before she went out in the second heat. So we're just getting a, a replay of this. It looks like she finished third. The South African in lane eight just possibly edging her out for four. I think they were your top four. South Africa getting that fourth and final automatic qualifying spot. But we cannot not talk about this lady here. Our winner giving the thumbs up. Beatrice Masalingi from Nigeria, the personal best. Hannah, you can't want anything better than that can you I can't want anything more okay well this is heat number two let's get the results for you now praise okafuki 11.65 keris hill in second 11.65 we said that was a dead heat we couldn't call it they couldn't really call it either uh, joanna Kleiman 11.80 for third and Shakon for fourth, 11.86. So fifth at the moment, the pole, 12 flats. She actually will sneak through because fifth in heat number one was 12.02. So at the moment, we have a first automatic qualifier coming from heat number two. Let's hand back then to the men's shop at group A and see who else is getting nearer to that automatic qualification spot of 19 at 20. 
So that did look like a good first round throw from our European Junior Championship champion, Ramadani. I also think he might be the first Kosovian man at the World Juniors. They've had a female representative, but he is their first male. And could he come away with a medal to boot? What a, what a debut at the World Junior Championships that would be for the Kosovan. Well, he looks like he's enjoying it. Slightly, oh, waving. I don't know what that is. I love to watch their reactions. 1889, though, for his first round throw. That's a great statement to put out to the world, to his other athletes. Here we go. Let's continue then with the events here in the shot put. A lot of action going on in this event. So this is Geshe Gailey. <laughs> He's going up next. 18.55 is his best throw. He walks out of the circle. Sporting some great glasses there. Only athlete I think possibly I've seen so far in the men's shop wearing glasses. Um, maybe it's a bit of a statement for him from Iran there. 17.13 for his opener. Puts him in fourth at the moment. A lot of athletes still to throw. A long way to go in this competition, but at least he has a mark down. That's what we're looking for. Marks on the board. And a lot of the men seem, seem slightly under their season's best and their personal best, but I'm sure they'll warm up into this event. See Brigia there with Belarus. Belarus, another nation that are just so accomplished um, in the throws. He's got a personal best of 19.30, so that is over the automatic qualifying mark of 19.20, and he's managed to land that shot right on that line. That could be one of our furthest throws in Group A. Again, you can see yeah. it's a bit cagey. You know, you want to you want to get over that qualifying mark, seal your fate, and relax. But a lot of these gentlemen are going to have to go through their second and third round throws to secure automatic qualification. This athlete was fourth as well in the European Under-20 Championships. That's possibly, I'm going to say it, the worst position to come. So close, yet so far away, and you, you go home without a medal. But 19.07 to open up his account. Top of the pile at the moment, the only athlete into the, the 19th, so that's quite a statement to put out. Great shots then over the Moy International Sports Centre, the Casanari Stadium. Oh, got an athlete, a coach there on FaceTime. Well, a lot of the Kenyans then sitting around, just watching some of the action. The athletes, of course, are allowed in the stadium. No fans, unfortunately. That is something we'd love to see. We'll have to wait a little longer for that. the track now then and to heat number four of the women's 100 meters tina clayton then 17 years old yesterday belated happy birthday to you from jamaica a pb of 11 17. cooper from the harmers in lane five pb of 11 71. the italian then godros she goes in lane six, seven, 11, 64. And then uh, Victoria Foster in lane eight. She's got a PB of 11, 61. Seven athletes then in, in heat number four of these women's 100 meters. Cooper there, Tina Cooper from Jamaica, the under 20 champion. She'll be looking to retain the Jamaican title from Bianne Williams, which was achieved in 2018, of course, in Finland. Can she bring back the title to Jamaica? Butawanji in two. Kubakova in three. Clayton in four. Set. Cooper in five. <laughs> Botello in six. And they're off. Great start there for Clayton. She looks super strong and just next to her, Kubinova from the Czech Republic coming strongly to take second. I think it was Forster on the outside, possibly, who got third. Yes, it was. 
at the time of 11.79, but Tina Clayton there, 11.53 to take the honours. Much slower than her personal best time of 11.17, but that does not matter. She gets out really low. She stays really low for quite a while, doesn't actually get into full flow until about 30 metres out and then just accelerates and takes that win easily. She slows down from about 10 metres out as well, which is a great great achievement for this lady and again Hannah she could work on her style I mean work for her at the moment but again if she really focused on driving those arms a little bit better I'm sure this athlete would go even faster again she's only 17 so she's got a, a long way to go and it looks pretty comfortable for her in lane four no one really challenging her on either side so not really a benchmark so I'll be intrigued to see how far she can go when she has stronger competition next to her Yes, and we'll take a look back at those results of Heat 3. It was Masalingi there with a national under-20 record with 11.20. From Tima Gobles, 11.59. Melissa Kashmut with 11.80. And Charlize Allard of South Africa with 11.84. So those are our automatic qualifiers. That Persian um, from Finland with 11.85. That's looking good for one of the non-automatic qualifying marks. But we will wait until we move through all of these heats uh, before committing to who will get the non-automatic qualifying time. Uh, qualifying spots. There are four of those up for grabs based on times. Well, there's so much action happening all around the stadium. On day one of these championships, five days of action to bring you a lot of coaches just milling around watching their athletes on these early stage of the competition and giving them advice when they're allowed, when they can. It's great to have coaches involved. Hannah, how important was it for you to have a coach around and giving you advice? I know you went to a world championship yourself. Well, I, I had a very, I had a brilliant coach and I'd say one of his strengths actually was that he could send me off to a competition without him <laughs> and I would be okay. But I wasn't, I'm not in a technical event like some of these guys. 1500 is, is fairly simple, but um, it's great to have that support. They haven't got the crowds. Many of them might not have their family out there. So to have their coach and the team staff to support them um, will be a really good help to these athletes. Okay, well, men's qualification summary from the hammer throw. Greece, Canada, France, all with very good distances. 76-25 for Nusaki. Katzberg with 74-39. And as we expect, the Frenchman Jean Brule with 74 there to his name as well. All automatically qualified because the distance to the throw was 74 meters. That was the qualifying standard or the top 12 athletes of course to progress to the final and we will have to wait till that group b gets underway uh, that will that will start in about half an hour so you can see the men warming up down there but once that group b has unfolded then we'll be able to see the top 12 qualifiers for that final for the men's hammer throw well, back to the shot put then, and let's see how the men are getting on in this event because we saw them a little bit earlier. <laughs> Very loud and aggressive in his throw. We saw him a little bit earlier. He's the athlete with a PB of. 19.09. He'll really be looking to throw a little bit further if he is to be in contention for a medal here. Puts his hoodie back on because it's not the warmest of days in Nairobi today. There we go, a 17.69. Much better distance than his first attempt of 15 metres. Only good enough for six as it stands though. Be looking to get a little bit further up the ranks if he is to progress because we know that the top 12 do go through or 19, 20, no one yet with an automatic qualifying distance. But Vasquez Gomez is 
getting ready for his second attempt. Based on personal best of that 2032, Gomez is the, the class of the field, if you, if you like, but he's got to deliver it on the day. And, and no one has got over that automatic qualifying mark of 1920 yet. Could wow. Vasco Gomez be the first man to achieve that? Not with that throw, but that will be, that is a good throw. Could be an improvement on his 1882 from the first round. Vasco Gomez, the second round attempt. Athletes always want to better their distances with each round, of course. Athlete from Cuba. Putting his waterproof on. I wonder if it feels a little bit kind of damp in the air out there. Possibly, it doesn't look the brightest of days. Okay, but then we can bring you Heat four results from the women's 100 meters. Tina Clayton then, 11.50 for top honors. Kubakova, the season's best of 11.75 in second. Forster, 11.75 as well in third. And Bertello of Italy, fourth with 11.86. The Canadian then, Goodros, looks to be pretty safe at the moment with 11.91. Looks like she might make it through to those semifinals. Here we are with Heat five of this women's. 100 meters. So we're working through the lineup to Disco of Italy, but Illich in lane five serves her to Disco there with the with the personal best of 11.65. But Ivana Illich of Serbia, she was second at the European Junior Championships. She's got a PB of 11.38. So keep your eye out on lane five for her. Lucy Mitchukova of Czech Republic with personal best of 11.76. Charlotte Freight of Monaco and Leah Bertrand of Trinidad and Tobago with 11.52. She was second at those North American, Central American, Caribbean championships that we will reference throughout this championships because uh, that was really interesting to look at those recent results just from July where that championships was in Costa Rica. But this is the fifth and final heat of the women's 100 metres. And get our final competitors vying for the semi-final. Semi-final will be later this evening. Nikima in lane one. Namecik lane two. Todiska of Italy. Ilic of Serbia. Michinkova of Czech Republic. Afreit of Monaco. And Bertrand of Trinidad and Tobago. And that's a great start there from Illich in lane four. She's looking super strong, but it will be Bertrand on the outside as well that might challenge her. But Illich looking strong at the well at the moment. Bertrand coming through for second place. Mitchinkova for third. Yes, Mitchinkova there for third. Namecik for fourth. But a great victory there from Illich of Serbia, showing her class and why she did get that silver medal in the European Junior Championships. Opening up her campaign strong drive phase and you can see she's left the others behind in her wake in that first 50 meters and keeps that cadence and that speed so well through the line but Leah Bertrand doing really well to come through for that second place as well we can see the Italian athlete as well alongside a smaller figure than the Serbian much different styles I love this angle as well just to see their styles but Illich really able to ease down on the line as well especially for the last 10 or 5 meters or so just to to have a look across at the clock as well and go okay 1176 that may be round down to 1175 you saw that doing so on your screen as well so a nice victory then for the serbian in lane 5 PB of 1138 as well so she knows she can go faster but just easing through the rounds just ticking off the heats and now We'll attempt the semi-finals later this afternoon. That will be brought to you at 10 past four, so just as our afternoon session gets underway. But we still have loads of action to bring you. Loads going on in here. We'll bring you the results of those in a short while. But you can see the wind blowing a little bit around the stadium. It doesn't look like the warmest of days. Don't know why you're yawning there. It's a load of action going on. Surely there's enough to keep you awake at this time in the morning. And you're a little bit later than us as well. I think you're about 10 o'clock now. It's only 10 past eight in London. So feel for us at home. I love the yellow mask there. Very much on theme within their team colors. But back to the men's shot putt. 
then and see what can be happening over in this. Can anyone produce something big in these opening stages? That's what we really want to see. I can hear they feel they're producing something big. Let's see. Biri can produce a better throw than his first round throw. 1907 was his first round throw. Leading at the moment. Fourth place, of course, in those Euros under 20. Only about five weeks ago. That's July. Having to peak twice, I'm sure, for these guys. No problem. There he goes. He does better it. 1928. Puts his jumper over his shoulders, likes to keep his neck nice and warm. Obviously, that's key. These guys keeping warm, not letting their muscles seize up. He gets an automatic qualification mark. The big Q next to his name is what he's after. That's there. He can walk away and go and get himself worn out. He's going to head over to the goal cap of Turkey. He's got a personal best of 18.95, just on 17.84 from that first round. Could be quite an ask for the Turkish athlete to make it into the final, but I'm sure he's going to give it a go. So Meli Goklap there of Turkey, short of that 18-meter uh, mark there. I don't think that will challenge his first round though of 18 of 17.84. He has one more round to have a go with. Maybe even close to his personal best. Make it big for that final. Distance for Goklat, our Turkish athlete. It's a foul throw in the end there, so he will stay on that 1784 as his furthest throw so far. Sitting in sixth, though, which is obviously where he would like to be at the moment. Um, slightly better because if the athletes in Group B produce some very long throws, then he may be shunted down out of the 12 automatic. Cypress now, woo, very fast. Spin phase there from Cypriot Athlete. Head though in his shirt. Just mopping up a bit of sweat, maybe. These guys are building up a little bit of sweat in this comp competition. Alexi Didas here. Does he post a no throw for his second attempt? 1648 is best so far. So this is the result of that final women's 100 meter heat. It was a victory for Ivana Illich in 11.75. Leah Bertrand coming through for second place, 11.82. Muchinkova, 11.93. And Nymchik, 11.98. So that's an automatic qualifiers there in that top four. Like we said, the first four qualified automatically. And then we are looking for another four non-automatic qualifiers. They will advance based on their time um, into tonight's semi-final. So it'll be a nervous wait for a few of these women to see if they can make it into this evening's semi-final round. Well, we can see then the final results of the women's 100 metres to see who qualifies. So first page of automatic qualifiers, Beatrice Masalingi leading the timesheet at the moment with 11.20. Tina Clayton, 11.50 in second is the automatic qualification there. And we can see the athletes with the, the smaller cues next to their names are the athletes who made it through as well to those semi-finals. The Finnish athlete, 11.85. And then finally, uh, the pole, uh, Monica Romascu with 12 seconds. And then Syrian athlete, there were 12.0 to also make it through automatic qualification. Ben Chopper then is continuing. Kanikis is up for his attempt. 16.92, his best so far. This is his second attempt. Doesn't look as happy with that. 
as he'd have liked. He's a best of 18.78, so looking to get near to that mark. If he can, if he's to continue in these World Under 20 Championships. Let's see what he posted then. Could he improve it? Not quite. 16.48 in his second attempt, sitting in eighth place at the moment. Still a chance to make it further. Liebenberg then from South Africa, 16, 17, 69, excuse me, in his second attempt is his furthest so far, 15 meters in his first round. What can he produce for his third and final attempt here? He wants more. Can he get it? I'm not quite sure. So round one, 17, 69. Fifteen meters was his first round. Second, seventeen, sixty-nine. Can he go further? Is this further? He's gone over to speak to his his coach. We're waiting. As he is 1706, so his best attempt was in round two. 1769, that was. Sitting in seventh. Will be quite a nervous wait, I believe, for Liebenberg. Now it's the athlete in third at the moment, Vasquez Gomez, the only athlete. Who has produced a 20 meter throw? His lifetime best, of course, 2032. It's also a national under 20 Cuban record, equal record. He screams at that one. It lands on that yellow mark, proper actually over there measuring it from. Over that yellow mark, that looks like it is automatic. Vasquez Gomez's best was 18.89. It looks further. Measuring it for the back of where the put lands, of course. He's looking longingly, waiting for his result to be confirmed. That was his last throw anyway. Qualified in the first, 1966. That's what the big man wanted. He came for a big throw and he got it. Really close to his season's best, actually, of 1978. Only 12 centimeters below that. So he's creeping closer to what he knows he can produce. Ramadini then from Kosovo. Third so far, 18. 89 his best, 18.35 in round two. Oof. Not quite over that automatic qualification. It'll look to be a similar distance to his previous two throws. Shaking his head at that, he's not happy, really not happy with that. He knows he can produce something much further. 19.92. His best. This guy will be a legend in Kosovo. Like Hannah said, the first male athlete to compete at these under 20 championships. Making history wherever he goes at the moment. Can he continue it here this week? And he looks chilled, doesn't he? Ramond Ramondini, need to say, is a. He'd look a bit more stressed there, but that third place in 1887, let's think our think, keep our fingers crossed uh, that that 1889 best throw will be enough to get him into the final.
Well, let's get back to the action on the track then. It's the men's 100 metre heat. This is heat one we have for you here. Okay, from Canada then, we have Omen Small with a PB of 10.4. On the fastest in the field. And we've got Munga then, we just passed. Then we're gonna go all the way to lane seven, Godson Brumi from Nigeria. He is the fast in the field. 10-1-3 for Godson Brumi. He'll be looking to produce something like his compatriots did in the women's 100 meters heats. Romero then from in lane eight. Okay, well, let's focus now on Medeiros in lane one, a uh, small in lane two from Canada. Romero then with a PB of 10.50 from lane eight. He's the closest to your screen. Kaza Ali then, Al Kaza Ali from Iraq in 10.58. These athletes, the first heat of the men's 100 meters. Here we go, they're out first. 10 meters then small looking pretty good al kazali looking good as well but nigeria coming strongly loping across the line for godson brumi from nigeria he made that one look like a piece of cake 10 40 his time and small then in second for onward small from canada but let's see them get out of the blocks very even in terms of getting out of the blocks, couldn't really place them. Al Kazali actually had a really strong start in lane four, but then it was Nigeria who really put their foot on the accelerator to bring it home for Nigeria. Munga then in lane five as well, going strong from the outset, but then couldn't quite stay with the pace over the last 20 meters or so. But it was Godson Brumi then walks off hands on his hips he poses for the camera it's great to see the athletes getting their hands sanitized as well as they walk off the track that's something i never expected to say 18 months ago but i'm saying it every week now Yes, such lengths the local organising committee have gone to and uh, it sounds like they're taking it very, very seriously in Nairobi and they, you can tell that because there's no crowds here. Uh, Kenya love athletics, but unfortunately no crowds as we head over to the high jump for the women's heptathlon. Enoch here on the runway. So Enoch there of Estonia, that is her first attempt of the competition bar at 157 at the moment very nice very nice clearance there for the Estonian you can see there some of the athletes have already cleared 157 as well some of the athletes choosing not to come in because this will be below their best the uh, best in the field is 182 from Anita Slavetchukuk we won't see her yet, she might not come in yet, but the officials just getting that bar set up. Yeah, with only, with only eight athletes in this heptathlon, it'll be a great chance actually to see all of these athletes and exactly what they can do in all seven of the events. I think we can really focus on some of them and really get to know these athletes a little bit better. I'm going to say that's what I'm really excited about for this heptathlon and see what they can perform and, you know, if they can get any PBs here today. I know there's a lot of PBs set in the European under 20s and all these athletes actually in this heptathlon are from Europe. So it's possibly a little bit of a repeat of that competition that we saw only a, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm looking forward to seeing that one and seeing if the European champion as well in Valentin can go even further. That's, that's her on your screen there. Very strong looking athlete.
to see that heat one of the men's 100 meters got an Oke Okumbrume with a victory at 10 35 from Almond Small 10 54 and Romero of Nicaragua with a 10 60 came through very fast on the outside a great finish from that athlete with those first three automatically qualifying to the semi-final well back to the high jump then let's see how these ladies can get on the Ukrainian athlete then making light work of that. Valeria look abroad. Flew smoothly over the bar there. Uh, 160. So she started at 154. Maybe again, some of these use the slightly lower bars as a warm up. They know what they can do. So, you know, they just want to to get some confidence. But this is the European under 20 champion. Such a tall athlete making that height on the bar look very easy indeed. She just bounces over there with such ease. Again, wearing some leggings because it's not the warmest. 15 degrees, I believe, out there in Nairobi this morning. And it is only the morning, of course. It's only 25 past 10 local time in Nairobi. So 160 for Valenin as well. So she matches the Ukrainians mark. That's what everyone's on at the moment. That's where the bar height is set. Oh, a couple of the athletes relaxing as well. Not always a chance to relax in the 1500 meters, Hannah, but you know, if you're a high jumper, that's the life of a high jumper, isn't it? But Kozak here then coming up, so she Missed 157, went in at 154 for that warm up, possibly the Croatian. Good clearance there from the Croatian athlete. We'll look at three centimeters in this event. That's 38 to 39 points, so it's significant. So you want to go as high as you can, but you want to conserve energy for those later rounds so you can you can go as high as you can never mind the rest of the uh, five events that these ladies have to go but a good clearance there from Cossack there first time clearance at 160 with a PB of 163 as well second heat then on the track the men's 100 meters okay let's bring you some of the athletes then in this event favor ashi of nigeria he'll have seen what his teammate godson Prumi did in heat number one and want to match it what 10 one seven his pb who still then of turkey he's a balkan under 20 champion from last year do you remember when that cat ran across the finish line he was in that race here we go cuba is up next Montoya 10.35 his PB and Miller in eight and Ku oh, Kuku in eight this is the second heat of the men's 100 meters Ashi from Nigeria in one Yusal three Alves four Montoya five and Guillo six Mondino seven, Miller eight, and Quaqua in nine. All settled in their blocks, waiting for the starters' orders in heat two. Set. Watch the outside of Nigeria. Can you get out fast? Not as fast as the Cuban athlete in the middle of your screen in lane five. He is stretching them. Nigeria, something has gone terribly wrong for Asher of Nigeria. Montoya from Cuba takes the victory in this one in 10.45. Miller in second and Mondino in third. Asher, though, who had expected to reform 11 seconds. He has a lifetime best of 10.17. He never really got out and into this race. And it just looked like he tightened up and the field really ran away from him. Cuba stretching their lead with Montoya then in lane five. Not sure what went wrong then, but the Cuban athlete looking fast, looking strong, really wasn't troubled in this event. Didn't have to dip the line. Looked like he had a bit of a stumble actually as he crossed the line there. 
but maybe it's just because the athletes do all kind of run into each other. They're meant to stay in lanes, but they never do. They get a little bit excited. But Montoya then, he makes light work of this second heat of the men's 100 meters. I'm really, really interested to see what favor Ashley then from Nigeria has to say about that. He's the, uh, the person that we thought would really feature really strongly. Actually, his coach was a former under 20 champion himself in this event back in 94. Was really to look, looking to, to match that mark of his coach. Doesn't seem like it's to be the case because maybe it was an injury. We'll have to just get confirmation of that a little bit later. But two heats already finished. First three in each heat and the next six fastest will advance to those semi-finals, which are also taking place alongside the women's a little bit later on. Tonight, we'll be bringing those at 4.40, so not long to wait for these athletes. There'll be a, a chance for them now just to, to quickly get back onto that warm-up track and have a little bit of a cool down and maybe for the sprinters a massage. Hannah and I would never have got massages in between rounds if they're on the same day. Possibly back in the day, we'd be told to jog for about 20 meters, do a few stretches, go and eat as quickly as possible. That's the kind of thing these athletes are told to do these days, isn't it, Hannah? I was going to say, scoff a banana and uh, try and get yourself ready for the next round. But uh, yeah, these athletes will be uh, probably a bit more finely tuned, and especially these sprint athletes. They're so used to having more than one round in a day, and, and uh, that's quite foreign to me. Maybe not to you as an 800 me to run it. Did, did you do that at a, at a junior level, run more than one event in one day? I don't think in 800 meter I ever did, but it's something that I would have been okay with seeing on, on a start list. If they said I'd be doing that, I'd be like, okay, it's just something you do. Because you know in training, you probably run 10K in a training session, you know, not just 800 meters, of course. So um, it's nothing new there, but a lot of uh, the athletes' friends obviously allowed in the stadium will be cheering on their friends, their teammates, but here is confirmation then of heat two of that 100 meter men. So Montoya then with a season best of 10.40 to take top spot there. Wendell Miller from the Bahamas in second with 10.51, that's a PB for him. And from Argentina, Thomas Mondino, 10.53. Yuma Usal from Turkey will have to wait and see if his time of 10.69 is good enough to take him through. He can be the next six fastest, of course, go through to those semi-finals. But Faber Ashe, 11 dead, with a PB of 10.17 coming into this. Not what anybody expected of him. I'll have to wait and see then. If the Turkish athlete, Yusel, does make it through, I love the story of the cat crossing the finish line in those Balkan Under-20 championships in 2020. Hannah, I was telling you that story yesterday. I said, it was all over the internet. It went viral on Twitter. It was cat crosses the finish line in the 100 meters. But you said that's something that you used to see when you were training in different countries all the time, not in a race, possibly. <laughs> no, it was a big problem training in Kenya, actually. We used to train in E10. Um, yeah, it's, it'd still be another flight here from Nairobi. We'd fly into Nairobi and fly out there. But um, yeah, she'd often get a goat wandering across the track or maybe a cow. And uh, mid rep that was quite hard to deal with. Perhaps that's why all these team members, the coaches and the athletes, have come to watch just to see, is there anything else I need to keep an eye out for? You get birds. You get that a lot in the football, don't you? You have a, a seagull come down and get in, get in the way. So you never know what you have to contend with in, in sport. Yeah, exactly. If you train with everything, all extremities, then, you, then you're absolutely fine when it comes to racing. A lot of coaches then keeping an eye on the action on their athletes. A lots of extra safety measures been put in place to make this event happen. Let's give a massive nod to the LOC who have been working so hard over the last year from when this event was meant to take place, of course, in 2020 to, to really make this event happen because it's so important for these young athletes. And you can see how much they enjoy it, but it's not just about the enjoyment and having fun. It's about their progression into the senior ranks. This has been a platform for so many athletes to further their careers, of course. But let's join the women's heptathlon high jump it is in full swing on the infield here in the Casanari Stadium. Hannah, what's what's been going on? So we are now up to 163, and that was Mahogbrod of 
Ukraine. She's over that for the first time. So her personal best is 172, so we think she's got a bit more of a ceiling in there. But as we said, it's about trying to accumulate points in this event, obviously, so her heptathlon. Uh, but you want to conserve of energy for the future events as you go on as well. You see Kreiner here of Austria. So unfortunate she was disqualified in the hurdles at the European Junior Championships, but she's having a much better championship so far. A lovely first time clearance there for the Austrian athlete. She's got a personal best of 180, so this 163 will be within her capabilities as well. There we go, so she just walks off clearing 163 really nicely. The second athlete to do so. And here we are with heat three of the men's 100 meters. Two fast and entertaining heats so far, but in lane one in this heat, we will have Lomeli Ponce from Mexico, personal best of 10.44. On his, ins on his outside, Oliphant from South Africa, and then Tarsis Orgo from Uganda. He's got a personal best of 10.35. He was third at the Ugandan Senior Championships. Marcinec on his outside, and Tobago of Botswana. He's got a personal best listed of 10.24, but he did run a 10.14. It's not been ratified, so I think he'll be keen to put down a fast time here in this championships. Ramai of Iraq on his, his outside, Youssef of Colombia, and Bambay on the outside. You can see uh, the athletes keen to see what's going on. <laughs> Something they're not happy with there. The Ugandan Orgo looks ready to go, but your full, full, line, full lineup is Lameli Ponce of Mexico, Oliphant of South Africa, Orgo of Uganda, Marcinec, Tobago of Botswana, Remai of Iraq, and then Yusuf in lane eight, and Bebai in lane nine. This is the third heat of the men's 100 meters. First three automatically qualify for the semi final later this evening. Set. They're away first time. A laboured start there from the Ugandan, and it is the Botswana and Tobogo. He's looking good. Tobogo and Botswana drives all the way through the line. 10.23, so that would be a personal best. But like I say, there was a race where he clocked, stopped the clock at 10.14, and it hasn't been ratified for some reason. Rounded up to 10.26 there for Tobogo. Second for Tego, but we have got a casualty on the track. Yeah, Babia there in lane nine. We'll have to get an update on how he is after that. Didn't look too good, but back to the action there. We'll get a recap of this race. Tobago there, he stumbled a little bit out of the blocks, but came through so strongly. You can see him driving all the way to the line and just uh, losing the athlete there in lane nine, potentially with a bit of cramp. But Tobago, no cramp there. He looked smooth and he looked in control. And stamping his authority on that race. And like I say, maybe a point to prove uh, to get a fast time next to his name during this championships, but a good second place finish there from Orgo of Uganda. That 10.35 would be one of the competitors to look out for as we move through these rounds. Well, back to the men's ha hammer throw as well. A lot of field events still going on as well around the stadium. But Pile then the European under 20 champion from Poland. PB of 79.59. That's his first attempt. Let's see what mark he can put. This is Group B, of course, now. We watched some of the athletes from Group A a little bit earlier on. But this is the man to beat this time out. Poland are so strong in this event. He'll be looking to take top on honours for and add it to his European title. Absolutely, such a championship performer there, Palais, stealing that uh, title in the closing rounds with his national record, national junior record at 79.59. Long wait for his first round throw to get measured here. He'll be, he'll be keen to get that automatic qualifying marker 74 out of the way and get back to the hotel, get his feet up. We've got Theodora Sogas of Greece just patiently waiting before he comes in. 
the personal best is 74.46, so if he can match his personal best, he'd be through. It's 72.44 for Pelé, so not the automatic qualifying mark. Um, but that, that's a good that's a good mark. We didn't see that many competitors over the 70 meter mark in the first round, just five. So that puts him in good stead when we look to those overall top 12 getting into the final. But Theodore, Theodore Zokas will be next. Greece have actually only ever won one medal in the men's hammer throw, and that was back, Hannah, in 1990. That was a silver medal in the event with a throw of 70. 32 there, which would be quite an achievement, wouldn't it, for Greece to get another medal in this event. We're saying the Poles really love the throws, but actually the last time they had a champion in this event was in 1996, so again, many moons ago now, so I'm sure Dawid will be loving to, to look at those and go, I'm sure I can get my name on the top spot this time out, of course. In 2018, it took 80-65 to be crowned the champion. Yeah, so foul throw there for Zokas in the first round, but him with Oristis de Sakas, who we saw in the first round, he was one of our automatic qualifiers, the 76-25. Uh, yeah, looking really strong for those Greek field eventers. So let's give you an update of the results of the, the heat three of the men's 100 metres. Tobogo then with a national junior record of 10.22 for top spot. Oregot in 10.48 in second. And Olaf Olafant 10.52.43 from South Africa. Lamelli Ponce will be looking to see if he will go through in one of the next fastest six spots available with 10.60 to his name in fourth. Okay, back when the high jump of the women's heptathlon then. Kozak is up next. The Croatian athlete has a PB of 163. Yes, I say Kozak, so exciting. She's only 16, uh, but she ran in the 60 meter hurdles indoors in the European Championship. She's Balkan under 20 100 meter hurdle champion. So she's been playing around with other events, um, but I'm super excited to see the 16 year old in this event. Unfortunately, a failure there for her. She does have a personal best uh, overall of 163. So she's she's pushing up her, she's attempting a personal best there. It was a first, second time failure there. Uh, but already with that 160 to her name is very good. As you see, Kehok, Kehoko of Finland clattered that hurdle in the first event, but doing much better in the high jump so far. That's really smooth there from the Finnish athlete. Kayoko, she's got a personal best of 178, so you'd expect this 163 to be uh, be easy for her. But hey, it's always a competition. You've got to, got to bring your competition on the day. It doesn't matter what your personal best is. But a good mark there from Kayoko. Second time clearance at 163, only coming into the competition on this height. Yeah, all these athletes, of course, will have their preferred events in this heptathlon. But they obviously have to have a great standard at all of them. That's what this event is all about. Making all these seven events come together on the day. Well, the 16-year-old then is, is back attempting this height again. Really psyching herself up for this one, as you can see. Rocking back and forth. And again, a nice dry. Oh, she just clatters that bar again. Doesn't look happy with that performance. And uh, but she's trying to equal her personal best. So uh, decent showing from the Croatian athlete with 160. But I'm sure she would have hoped to at least equal her personal best. As we said, those 38, 39 points per three centimetres. Uh, so going out on 160 um, will be a shame for the Croatian athlete. OK, well, heat four then of the men's 100 metres. Cranston then from Jamaica goes into the PB of 10. 37. He's the NACAC under 18, 100 and 200 meter champion from St. Elizabeth Technical High School as well. Okay, we're going to go to Benjamin Richardson in lane seven from South Africa. He's the South African tall under 20, 100 and 200 meter champion. This guy Richardson looks heads above everyone else on the start list. We have to look up to him. 
And then in lane nine from Italy, Ulissi then, Angelo Ulissi. He was third in the Euro under 20 meter, four by 400 meter hurdle. So has a medal to his name from the junior champs earlier on this year, but in the quartet. In the sprint relay, made it to the semi-finals in the 100 meters in the Euro under 20 in this individual 100 meter event. But Cranston in two, Sud in three, Mendoza in four, Christoph in five, Khalid in six, Richardson seven, eight we have Salas Lopez, and nine Ulysse from Italy. That's how your lineup looks for heat number four. Fastest in this one is Richardson in seven, the South African. In your screens now, 10.17 is his personal best. Set. There we go, Richardson doesn't get the fastest start, but he is being carried. Cranston, though, on lane lane number two, gets a really fast start for Jamaica, but it is Richardson that comes through as the favourite, as we'd expect in 10.35, his winning time from Cranston and Khaled. Cranston, 10.49, and Khaled there. 10.58, the Italian fourth, Ulysses, 10.62. We'll have to wait and see if his time is fast enough. Okay, Jamaica really drive out and get the best lead there from that angle, but Richardson, he just pulls away with that long, really high stride there. Really powerful running in lane number seven for the South African under 20 champion in this event. He looks strong these down as well as possibly can the Jamaican in two but at this stage you almost don't really want to but yes they have the semi-finals a little bit later on but really fast times then from Benjamin Richardson the really tall lanky athlete of South Africa he went in seven and he grabbed the victory from that lane as well we'll turn our attention back to this women's heptathlon high high jump Sophie Kreiner here of Austria. Lovely style, very controlled, very measured, but very effective. Sophie Kreiner with her first time clearance over 166. So the bar has gone up to 166 and we'll see how the rest of the uh, female athletes get on with this. Kayoko took her two attempts to get over her first height of 163, but those that scorecard doesn't affect these athletes, not like it does in the single high jump effect, uh, event. It is all about the highest distance you cut, you clear. It doesn't really matter how you've got there. You will get the points for that. So Kayoka negotiating that really well. So, you know, they're, they're still under a thousand points here. You hit a thousand points around about 180. So I'm not sure we'll see many of these ladies get close to that, but they are accumulating points as we move through this event. You can see Vannon in there with a great clearance over 166 as well. Yeah, Kayoka then, 19 years of age. And I wonder how much help it can be having two Finnish athletes in this. Is there a chance for them to have a little bit of a chat and kind of work tactically about it? It's not like the tactics I'm sure we'll see later on from the men's 3,000 meters, when we'll have the Kenyans going up and trying to work on tactics themselves. But yeah, advantage anyway, they've got a, a two in, is it eight chance, is there eight athletes for a medal? So that's that's quite a strong chance for a medal, have, have the Finns in the heptathlon. But the bar is being put up every time. Suka's there uh, with her attempt from Hungary. Garia 166, again a very tall athlete, which is an advantage, of course, in in this event. So this Levuchut coming up for her her jump. This might be the first time we've seen her in the competition. She's got the highest personal best of 181. Uh, the Latvian athlete resting her legs. We saw her having a lie down earlier. And you can see why, because this is easy going for her, that 166. <laughs> no emo well, a little bit of emotion, bit of a smile. It's always nervous starting your competition. Uh, have you gauged it right? Should you have come in earlier and, and, and warmed your legs up? But good clearance there for the athlete. I love those leg warmers as well, which <laughs> the athlete there is wearing um, from Lithuania. I think they look pretty nice. Is that kind of compressions? 
just to help with the calves, Hannah, is that why she'd be wearing those in the, in the high jump as well? Yes, absolutely. They will be putting so much strain on their body over these two days. You want every bit of protection you can get, and I think those uh, calf sleeves will be doing that and looking pretty good at the same time. You see Anouk attempting 166. PB 175. Should be easy going. Relieved <laughs> not of cursed uh, Anouk. It's uh, the Estonian athlete. Nice clearance there. So this women's high jump heptathlon competition really underway. But you expect the next few heights to sort these ladies out and uh, figure out the final points for them as we finish off the second event of the morning. <laughs> of the men's shot put group B so the action was coming thick and fast from this one Simran Broedev 19.22 to qualify in top spot Kobe Lawrence of Jamaica was second 18.65 not quite over the automatic qualification of 19.20 but the top 12 athletes progressing through Mazuski of Bulgaria, 1862 in second. Overall qualification then from both Group A and Group B on your screens now. Juan Quali Vasquez Gomez, 1966 qualifies first, as we'd expect in that one. And then qualification continues. And deep, Diwali, 1792. And Gokalp, 1784 is your final qualifier who will reach those shot put finals. That is Barrister Demante from Argentina on the inside to our first athlete in heat five of the men's 100 meters. Vore of Finland, Meluso of Italy, 10.25. It's a great time for a young athlete. I'm surely been inspired by Le Mans Marcel Jacobs winning that Olympic title in Tokyo. See Valaruba, Vidok of Poland, 10.45 to his name. Nazio Jean is our next athlete from Grenada. Uh, Kirani James, one of their fantastic senior athletes. But 10.33 for Nazio Jean, coached by his dad. Hopefully here, get him to watch him run today. And Gassib of Namibia and Lusanga of Conga there on the outside. This is heat five of the men's 100 metres. Demante in one. Vori in three, Malusa in four, Villa Rubia in five, Vidoc in six, John in seven, Gaseb in six, and in eight, Losanga in nine. So your first three will be automatically through to semi final. Keep an eye on the Italian in lane four, Maluzo with that 10.25, and Nazo Jean in lane seven with 10.33. That is our first faulty or false start that we've seen of the championship so far. It was, uh, let, let's hope it's just a faulty and they, uh, they let them go back. I couldn't see. So potentially a, a, a false start there from Remigo Santander, Villa Rubia, but he was so early, maybe they'll, maybe they'll let him off and just, uh, just recall it. Again, we're said before, Hannah, haven't we? It's Sometimes a learning curve for these athletes to, to go through the rounds, even experience a quorum for the first time. Maybe they will never have been in this kind of high pressure situation, which they're experiencing at the moment. Um, some of these haven't had that ex much experience and possibly this is why. Got a bit too excited. We're gonna go with excitement rather than nerves. And um, I think maybe, yeah, he was a little bit underprepared. But that is a disqualification, Hannah. That's not what you want to see. Shaking his head. His World Under 20 Championships ends, unfortunately, where it began. Well, that is a shame for the young athlete from Equatorial Guinea. You would have oh, hoped he'd get, get, a, get a run, but um, I'm sure he'll go away and he'll learn and he'll bring that into his uh, next races and his next experience. And you can see there that the negative reaction time. 
As the rest of the athletes settle back into their blocks, so we've lane two, Demonte, lane three, Vuari, lane four, Maluza, the fast Italian. We've lost lane five, lane six, Vidok, Poland, lane seven, John of Granada, and lane eight, Gaseb, lane nine, Losan Losanga. This is heat five of six of the men's 100 metres. Set. And they are away this time, a fairly even start. You can see the Italian just getting into his running there. You can see Malonzo of Italy, but he was pipped on the line by Vidok of Poland. The Polish athlete holding his cool and driving all the way to the line with 10.48. And Maluzo is second place and John in third place. So the top two personal bests coming in have qualified automatically in those top three, but it's a surprise, potentially a surpri surprise victory for Oliver Vidok of Poland. Almost equaling his personal best. Personal best is 10.45. The clock stopped at 10.45. I think it was slightly rounded up. Uh, but a great, calm, cool, collected uh, performance there from the Polish athlete. Approaching every round as a final, I feel like. They're driving through that line and taking it, taking it seriously. Well, it's a serious event, Hannah, isn't it? It's a world championship, so... Some people love just to see the number one next to their name, regardless if it's a heat, a semi or a final. Let's get back though to the heptathlon and see exactly what's happening over here. So the Finnish athlete then, 169 we are now at. Looking easy as she likes as she goes over that. Kayako as well, the Finnish athlete has two fins in it. Sitting one and two at the moment, 169 is the height, is the mark to beat. Vanenin, his second with 166, but we're going to Sukas, 166 as well. Hungarian athlete, this is her first attempt at 169. One seventy seven her best. So one sixty nine should be easy. Oof. Not as easy as she would have expected, but this is her first attempt at this height. Puts the jacket back on. Probably is questioning herself a little bit, Hannah, because it's quite under her personal best. Well, and it's expended energy and that's what you don't want to be doing when you're moving through seven events and sleeves of Vuchu. Vishuk of La Latvia, she's been keeping her powder dry, conserving that energy, and she does a very smooth clearance there again. As you said, she is the, the class of the field, if you like, with that personal best of 181. Uh, Kreiner of Austria is one, 180, so there's only one centimetre in it. Uh, but the Latvian for me at the moment, um, looking in control of this high jump competition and just ticking off those heights and accumulating those points. So 169, first clearance, first time clearance for Sliza Vuchuk of Latvia. Yeah, the Lithuania, Lithuania. Lithuania oh, athlete yeah, there, looking really strong. There's so many athletes to keep across. Excuse Hannah and I on our, our first day. We, we're working on it. And look then, let's see what she can do at 169. She is up next. This youngster that we keep talking about from Croatia. She's a national relay champion as well in the four times 100 meters. So she's got quite a lot to her name only 16 years and she's got 169 to her name now in this event she can uh, go back to the drawing board and wait to see where the bar is going to be moved up to next because she made that one pretty easy so three athletes so far past this height Vanenin has opted to sit out of this height so she she wants to go higher she knows she can go higher Having a little conversation with her coach, probably saying, yeah, I like that. Looks pretty easy. I'm pretty comfortable, feeling good. Well, this is the result of heat four of the men's 100 meters. And we did see a victory for Benjamin Richardson. Uh, Rachel said such a tall, long stride, rather like a tall Jamaican we used to know. Uh, but Benjamin Richardson, 10.28. Alec Cranston, 10.45. And Mohamed Khaled, 10.55. For your top three automatic qualifiers in heat four of the men's 100 meters. Who was the tall athlete that we possibly might know? Usain Bolt. Uh, 
Well, do you need to remember. That's what he's famous for, right? <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg, Hannah. It seems a lifetime ago that he was here. Let's go through these results quickly. So 10.44 PV for Duke, then Mazzello at 10.46 and John Third 10.59. All your qualified athletes so far, but we do have six fastest athletes to go. Slamonte there in fourth, 10.63. We'll have to wait and see. 10.63 is fast enough. Okay, well, this is the sixth and final heat of the men's 100 meters. Carlos Brown then from Bahamas. He goes in lane three, 10.57 is his fastest time. Lavelle, Brian Lavelle, 17 years old, very young athlete from Jamaica. 10.21, his personal best. Then in lane six, Simiyu from Kenya, 10.79. He'll have a big reception from his teammates, his coaches, anyone that's from Kenya, officials, they'll be cheering for him, I'm sure. Malushi in eighth from Oman. And then in lane nine on the outside, Ilovsky from Hungary, 10.36. Featured at the Euro under 18s. In the heat, was previously the fastest ever 12-year-old in the world in the 60 meters, 726. But your man on the screen there, Brian Lavelle, we looking strong in lane four, 1021. Carlos Brown in three, 1057 will also be featuring in this one. Joshua Hepburn in lane two from Honduras, the only athlete from Honduras competing at these World Under 20 Championships. Set. So look for Brown then in three, Lavelle in four. These two athletes going out strong, but Ilovitsky in nine as well from Hungary. He looks pretty strong and it was Lavelle, one, 10.47. Lovsky, two, 10.53 and Brown, three, 10.57. Lovsky really came through strong. The final stage of that to take the second spot. But again, it was those top three athletes featuring the entire way. The Kenyan athlete looking strong until 50 meters, then kind of just lost power a little bit. I'm not sure on the outside. That was really close, Veloski and Lavelle. We'll have to wait and see again because he's out of your screens at the moment. But Lavelle, really easy. Hepburn, Brown, Loski, so many athletes featuring in that one. The sixth and final heat, I guess they know what went before them, so know exactly how fast they need to run. It was a fast heat. It was competitive, three athletes easily going through, and that was automatic qualification as well. First three in each heat and six fasters. We'll get confirmation of all those results in a short while for you. Back to this women's heptathlon. That's Sukic of Hungary. And she had a failure last time we saw her, but not this time. A nice clearance there. The bar is at 169, or yes, 169. Third time clearance. So she will be in that last athlete to attempt 169. We think Vanenin has passed the European junior champion, arguably the favorite for this event, conserving energy. But a good clearance there for the Hungarian athlete. And here we do get our next glimpse at Saga Vanenin, the Finnish European junior champion. Personal best of 179 in this event. But 172 now, so that's 179 points for these ladies. I'm sure they will all fancy their chances at that. See the officials carefully measuring the bar to make sure it's at the right height. When Saga Vanenin won the European junior championships, she had 178. So she's still sort of within her capabilities there in terms of a championship environment. Um, so different doing a whole a whole heptathlon. These multi-eventers, they talk about your outright PB, but your PB within a heptathlon as well, because those are two different things. Uh, it's a lot of fatigue and uh, a lot of tactics you've got to carry into to this. Oh, it's just it's such a fantastic event, this. Mentally and physically taxing, but Saga Vanenin in the driving seat so far with that victory in the hurdles. And still in a good height here with 172 in the women's heptathlon. Yeah, Vanlin in the ninth best result in the year. 
in the world this year. She top score, 6271 points. That was achieved only about five weeks ago at those Euro under 20s. Flew over that height of 172. She opted out of 169 and she takes her first attempt. Really lovely height over the bar there in 172 to lead the standings in this second event. We saw her in the hurdles a little bit earlier on. Super strong in that event as well. No event seems to be her, her weak point at the moment, Anna. She's great in them all, which is the sign of a champion. No, absolutely, and uh, Sophie Kreiner there. First time clearance at 172 as well. She's on that personal best of 180. Um, I mentioned it before, she was disqualified in the hurdles at the European Junior Championship. So we potentially don't quite know uh, what Sophie Kreiner's capacity or full, full capability this season is, because uh, she wasn't able to finish that event. So it'd be really interesting to see how she goes. And Kei Hoko of Finland. She's seen her teammate go over and she joins her with a smooth clearance there of 172. First time clear clearance for both Finnish athletes. First time clearance is exactly what you want to see at the moment. Takes the pressure off. Go have a little sit down, put all their layers back on, which is exactly what they're doing at the moment. Um, it's not the warmest of days. We always think when you go to somewhere like Kenya, it's going to be positively balmy, and it's definitely not the case. I was reading a little bit about the climate, and it's not like we expect. It is always a little bit cooler than I think we think. But here we go. So next up, the Croatian athlete. Hungarian athlete, Eva, Sabina Susix. So she had two, um, no heights at 169. Then she cleared it on the third and final attempt. Now she's going for 172. Sh shocked reaction is what we get on 172 for this athlete. 177 is her best, so. Still shocked with that performance, maybe because she felt she had a bit of a wobble in the, the slightly lower height. But yep, she's done it. Yeah, a bit of that relief, a bit of that, uh, yeah, but relieved to go over there, but then back to the Lithuanian athlete, Lisa Vichuk scorecard so far and she maintains that so much such a different style for me than Venonin. Uh, Venonin was was uh, sprinting at the bar and flying over whereas Lisa Vutruk looks a bit more composed a bit you know it's, it's a, a very different style I, I love watching these ladies um attack all these different events um, and some of them have their specialities and some of them won't and Sliza Vucic is certainly um, a very accomplished athlete over this high jump. She's a, the national high jump champion as well in Lithuania as well, senior that is, not even just the juniors, but she actually only came 13th at the Euro under 20 with 5,367 points so definitely want to improve on that mark here but Anouk now, Pippa from Estonia, Pippa Anouk from Estonia. First attempt here and just clipped it and then almost had a bit of a, a fall off the, the bed as well there. I think she was a little bit shocked to, to see that bar fall. 175 is Anouk's personal best. So getting closer to that with 172, what we're on at the moment, 175 will be the height after the athletes clear 172. So she's closing in on personal best territory. Um, I'm sure, though, she had the height. She just clipped it with her foot at the end. So, well, I'm sure she'll be able to get over that mark when she attempts it next. But heading back now to the men's hammer throw group B is where we are at in this one. This is Ronald Mencia Zias of Cuba, personal best of 72, 77.20. So uh, she will be... Uh, honing in on that 74 automatic qualifying mark. Rank seventh overall in the competition. Dola Zalek then from Czech Republic. 
He is sitting with the best mark so far, 77.58. So the athletes will all be looking to go slightly better than the Czech score at the moment. That was a national junior record as well he achieved there, PB. Fantastic championship performer. And the Cuban likes that throw. Yes, and it's over the yellow mark. He's agonizingly close in his first round of 73.59, so just 40, 41 centimeters short of the automatic qualifying time. But Ronald Mencia Zias has secured that automatic qualifying mark with his second round throw, soaring over the yellow line. This is Group B of the men's hammer qualification. Oh, back to the high jump. Action is coming your way so fast. Hope you're all awake. Hope you've got your teas and coffees wherever in the world you are. Anouk's awake. She is loving that. She's screaming with her result there because she has just cleared that height, of course, which she was after. That was her 172. She failed at her first attempt, but she made it at her second. She will now progress to her PB height, 175. That's where we're going for her. She knows she can do 175. That's her PB. Can we see her surpass that height? in a short while and get a new PB in her heptathlon here in Nairobi. This is getting exciting in the heptathlon. Vanenin though now, she's the European under 20 champion, of course, just redoing her hair. You don't want to leave anything to chance. Men's Hammer though, Group B, we're heading back to see what's going on over in this event. We have so many events live at the moment. Kumar then is up next. Bipin Kumar from India. A foul in his first attempt. He's looking to post something big in his second attempt then. 62-24 puts him eighth at the moment. He'll be happy with the mark though. Delgado then on your screens next. From Mexican again. Didn't manage to post a distance in his first attempt. So this is his second attempt as well. Can the Mexican get a mark? He has a PB of 71.87. What can he do in round two then? Elgado then on your screens at the moment. Loving that bright green, the Mexican kit. You cannot miss him, that is for sure. just lost him on the screen there. He looked slightly overbalanced. I hope he didn't overbalance and he gets a safe throw. We always look for the white flag. Can't quite see that. This is now a replay. Let's see how he finished that. Did he overbalance? Did he? Stepped over. Red flag. Another no throw. I thought he just looked a little bit off kilter there when he left the hammer out of his hands. But we have one more athlete from Romania still trying to post a score. Nukarishi, second attempt then from Romania. 73.25 is his personal best. Again, all thrown great distances this year by looking to be in the top five or six because 12 automatically go through to the final or they want 74 meters, Hannah. Absolutely, I think that equaling that personal best for Narici of 73.25 might be enough for a final, but it won't happen with his second round throw. Another foul uh, for the Romanian athlete as he moves forward to the third round. I think it's Hammer just going out of the sector there. I oh, beg your pardon, it might be a valid throw. We'll see, red flag, so a uh, foul there in the second round for the Romanian athlete, Nora Ricci. Okay, well, here are the 100 meter heats. Six heats, these are the results from them. So, Brian Lavelle, he was first in heat number six, 10.43. Ilovisky, 10.51 to take second. Carlos Brown with a PB to take third in 10.53. And in fourth, then Omar Ali Al Balushi, 10.59. Another automatic spot for him in lane four.
here we are with the first heat of the women's 400 meters on the outside here from Nigeria. Opanyomi Deborah Okra. Okay, she's 16. We've already seen her in the mixed relay. She's such a good leg there. Let's hope she's recovered enough to qualify for the final, which is Saturday night. So she has got a long time after this. To her inside is Anna Lee Robinson. She's the Jamaican under 20 champion. She's got a time of 53 26. So one of the fastest in the field overall in this event. But Karashchuk of Ukraine on her inside in lane six. Ella Clayton of Canada, 54-21. Lucia Z Zava Delova of the Czech Republic there, the personal best of 54-72. On her inside is Cornelia Lesvich. She's a Polish athlete. She was a European junior champion. She's got a time of 52.02. She's out there in the f in uh, second place in the overall rankings. If we look at the season's best for this, in this event, on her inside is Mathilde Disco from France. Personal best of 53.99 set this season. You can see these ladies are looking for the first two uh, are the automatic qualifiers into Saturday's final, and they'll be joined by the next two fastest athletes. So Disco, Lesvich, Z Zavadilova, Clayton, Karashuk, Robinson, and OK. Set. Heat one of the women's 400 meters. Fast athletes on the outside there. We see Anna Lee Robinson of Jamaica has already closed up on Opanyemi Dobra Oke of Nigeria. 16 year old on the outside being chased down by Anna Lee Robinson. Jamaican under 20 400 meter champion. So she's got caliber this season already, but we'll have to watch as this stagger unwinds. And the Polish athlete Cornelia Lesvich is having a good run on the inside as well. She could have the lead slightly over Annalie Robinson, but Opanyemi Oke of Nigeria is struggling out there in lane, lane eight. But it is Lesvich as the stagger unwinds. 52.02 is such a phenomenal time for a junior. She's European junior champion. And look at the lead she has on the field. You feel she wants to look around and conserve some energy, but she's got a long time till she runs again. Perhaps just testing out those legs and getting herself ready for the final. But it is going to be Clayton in two, Tatiana Karashuk in three, and Annalie Robinson just pulling up before the line there, the Jamaican. It's such a shame to see that. She jogs over the line for fifth place, and Disco coming through for fourth place. What a time then to start. 52. Oh, lane four, though. Look, disappointment from the athlete from the Czech Republic. Looks like her hamstring just went in the opening stages of this 400 metres, the first 100 metres. But look at Robinson, how strong she was as well as she came to the 200 metre mark. But then she really faded as well, didn't she, Hannah, on the home straight? And it was the Polish athlete who just came through so strong. We know how strong the poles are in the 400 metres. They obviously, they're mixed. 400 metre relay champions from the Olympics. I'm sure that will have given her some motivation for this event, but she, she cruised across the line in 52. That is special. That is really special, Lesovic. Very impressive. I look forward to seeing her in the semi-final, but we'll head back to the women's heptathlon high jump. Yeah, so we're on 175, and the only athlete so far over that, as expected, Saga Vaninen from Finland. So we are now going to the Hungarian athlete, athlete Suchet. She's had one failed attempt, second failed attempt from her as well. So we're waiting to see if anyone can join Vanenin and get over this bar height of 175 in the women's heptathlon. Again, athletes can get over this. Many athletes with a PB of higher 177 is this lady's pb struggling at 175 at the moment slavucek right now is the athlete on your screen can she get over this height yes is the answer to that from lithuania that's her second attempt at this height but she's got a much greater pb of course 181 she's a national champion from Lithuania in this event, the senior champion. 
So she'll have the confidence to know she can go higher. Just a little bit of a falter in the opening round of this height. Bit of talk to her coach possibly, or even herself. A lot of these athletes do kind of do self-talk and they know what they have to do. They've been in this situation many times. So, Hanok then, she is up next. Can she get over this height? She's failed at her first attempt. This is her second attempt. This is her PB though. This is going for a personal best. 175 is her personal best. She calls her personal best. She's ecstatic with that. <laughs> Jumps and screams in excitement at equaling her PB. She kind of like, what, did it say on? Yes, it says on. Phew. Sigh of relief as well, Hannah, as well as excitement. A lot of emotions going on on this high jump bed as well. No, absolutely. You could see uh, she nearly cleared it on the previous attempt. And uh, you know, we were sort of agonizing for her then. Uh, we thought it might be possible, but just a great clearance there, 175. And to hit a personal best um, you know, in a, in a championship is brilliant. And then we have Kreiner as well of Austria. Nice, nice jumping from the Austrian athlete. But we have to see if she can attempt that 175 one more time. The action is coming back on the track then. Second heat of the women's 400 metres, but let's bring you up to speed on the results from heat number one. Lysovic then from Poland, she won that in 52.63, very easy. The Canadian Ella Clayton in second with... is looking strong as we just come into the final 100 meters of this event but look out for pressures in lane eight from south africa 53 59 she's looking strong she's really pushing the jamaican mcnuff looking really strong as well is the ukrainian all over she looks like she's going to get third place but it is mcnuff the jamaican who is going to finish first followed by Precious from South Africa. And I believe it's Arlova from Ukraine in third with 54.67. The winning time, McNuff, 54.13. Let's see how this unfolded then. The athlete in lane six, 
Archipova, she went out really strongly and she nearly caught the athlete on the outside of her McNuff from Jamaica on the back straight. But then it was McNuff and Precious who really put their foot down all over as well, looking really strong, looking lots of concentration as she comes round the top bend. Obviously, the staggers make it so difficult to see where these athletes are until we get to that final 100 metres. And then we can really see just how far away they are from each other. But those three were really close on the final 50 metres, but the, the Jamaican just dug deep and pulled away. Really tall athlete, looking really strong, as does the South African of Precious. Those two will be looking like the ones to watch as we progress to the final. The top three, though, all pretty fast, but it is only the first two in each heat. So all over, we'll have to wait and see. It's always a really agonizing wait to see if her time is quick enough. McNuff then looks very exhausted as she crosses the line there. I mean, these 400 meters really do take it out of you, but here's confirmation of those results. First two automatically go through. Jamaica, McNuff 54-1-3 and Precious 54-4-1. A national record then for Maldives, Hassan, 58-9-0. Her previous best, 59-1-8, and only had a season's best of 1 minute 94. So an exceptional run for Hassan to take the seventh spot there and a national record. She will be over the moon with that performance as we are for her as well. India, unfortunately, doesn't look like they'll be retaining the title with Sami in this one. But we have another Indian athlete in Heat 3, so maybe she could be the one who keeps a title in India. So Valanine here with her first attempt at 178 in this women's high jump competition. This would equal her season's best. 178 was what she jumped in taking that European Junior Heptathlon cha uh, Championships. So 178, first time for Saga Vinanen. Everything is looking smooth for the European Junior Champion to add that World Junior Championships to her, to her resume. Good clearance as she leads this Women's Heptathlon Championships. Well, there's only four athletes now left in this Women's Heptathlon Championships. Two have jumped 178. Two athletes still have two attempts to go, and that is Anouk and Sophie Kreiner, they're the two athletes who are trying to, to go further. So we saw Anok earlier with 175 her PB, but we're now going back to the Lithuanian athlete, Slavucci. <laughs> She's over, 178. She joins Saga Vinanin. Smiles for her all around Lithuanian athlete there. Great jumping. She's also the silver medalist for Lithuania in the long jump. So vertical and horizontal jumps, you name it, she can do them. Back to some of the crowd shots. Some of these athletes will just be acquainting themselves with the stadium ahead of competing. It's it's nice to come down and have a look at the, the warm-up, the cool room and the track to prepare yourself for your individual or your relay competition later in the week. So here we are with the third and final heat of the women's 400 meters. Caitlin Bob on the outside from Bermuda, her mother, uh, competed from Bermuda in the Olympics. So she's hoping to follow in those family footsteps, personal best of 52.79. On her inside, one of the home athletes, Sylvia Chalangat of Kenya, personal best of 55.21. She will take lane seven. So her inside is Nicola Bisova, of the Czech Republic. We already saw her in that mixed relay helping her team to second place. But inside her is Priya Habinthanam Hali Mohan from India. She got a personal best of 53.29. She's the Indian under 20 champion. But on her inside is a 
Umambong Ninsi Uka of Nigeria, 51.70. That is the fastest out of the entrance. Um, she made the semi-finals in Tokyo, but the World Junior Champions for her, Championships for her this week. We saw Barbosa there of Brazil and Sid, Sidi B on her inside, 55.99 for the athletes in lane two. This is the women's 400 meters heat, three of three. Just the first two qualify automatically. That is tight qualification. No semi-finals. This is straight to the final for these ladies. A busy, busy week for our male and female athletes with all the mixed relays, individual 400s and the 4x4s. Four Thank you, Jess. It's oh, over there. She just fell out of her blocks. And if we uh, if we get anything to go by with the uh, the men's 400s, we, men's 100 heats, we saw a disqualification for a similar action. This over there, she will be really frustrated. Such a great run before, but we we will have a look at the reaction times. She's already done mixed relay today. That went very well, but the individual not going as well. Yeah, gutted for this athlete on your screen. She knows, doesn't she, what, what she did wrong. She'll have practiced this so many times before. We've all been there, Hannah. We've put so much time and effort into our preparations. And sometimes you just can't be that hard on yourself. These kind of things do happen. And as a junior athlete, she needs to not let it affect her and just say, We've seen it happen to the best athletes in the world. We've seen it at Olympic finals. You know, it's unfortunately a part and parcel of this sport. And uh, she needs to go back now and, and know that, you know, she will still feature in, in the, the relays, hopefully. You know, her team will still go. We know the quality, but will we go again? Will we reset and go again? So a second attempt at this women's third and final heat of the 400 meters. No start for Bisova of Czech Republic. You can see that empty lane six. Set. First two through to Saturday's final. <laughs> and they're away this time. Keep your eye on Habathana Hali Mohan of India. But it is a fast start from Oku of Nigeria. Looked like the Indian athlete had got a fast start, but it is all about the Nigerian Uko. She looks smooth, she looks relaxed down that back straight. As they near the 200 meter mark, keep your eye on Caitlin Bob on the outside as well. She's going well. We can use the lines on the lines on the track to try and assess what's going on. I think it is Uko and Bob pretty closely matched, but they will move around this final bend. So let the stag run wind. So important to pace yourself correctly in these 400 meters. Have these ladies done this? You can see Caitlin Bob very maturely. She's taking a look on the inside. It's first two automatically to the final. Imabokong Nisi of Uka of Nigeria striding away. Has Caitlin Bob. She has eased off too early. Caitlin Bob pipped on the line by Sylvia Chelengat, the home Kenyan athlete, timing her finish to perfection. But a victory for Uko of Nigeria in 52.35 and Chelengat coming through to pip Caitlin Bob on the line. Chelengat with 53.55, that's a huge personal best for the Kenyan athlete, a great showing. Well, what a tight finish that third and final heat was. Here's a bit of a recap for you. So Uko gets out really strongly. The Nigerian does, would expect her to as well with a PB of 51.70. She storms down that back straight in those long white shorts, but Bob as well on the outside, looking really strong around that top corner. And as she comes into the home straight, she looks like she's got a little bit of a lead, but it is Nigeria who are really out in front and, and never gave up that lead, looking really strong. Bob trying to challenge her, but just tiring as we enter the final 50 meters, really tensing up, allowing the other athletes to just overhaul her on the line. Chellingat was the athlete that did so. Bob, unfortunately, falling over the line, but still did register a third place, which could possibly, Hannah, still allow her to progress through to the finals. 
Yes, I, I, you know, she was obviously full of lactic and full of fatigue, but I also felt she eased off a tiny bit and it's hard to get going again. But we will can bring you those results there. You can see a victory for Uko, 52-33. No trouble for her, progressing automatically to the final. Chelengat delivering championship performer there, delivering a personal best of 53-49. Caitlin Bob with a season's best of 53-62. We will keep an eye out for those fastest losers uh, spots. There are just two non-automatic qualification spots up for grabs as we head back to the women's heptathlon high jump yeah that's tough isn't it back to the heptathlon though saga valenin we're up to 181 in this women's heptathlon high jump this is your event leader so 178 Season's best then, 178 as well. Ugh. 181 proving a little bit too much at the moment. Nowhere near, unfortunately. You had to just kind of push that behind her because she knew she wasn't going to make it. So three athletes left in this competition. Sophie Craner now, trying to see if she can make it over 181. No, not at the moment. She cannot either. So she joins Valenim with a X next to her name. Two, two times not over 181 for Sophie Craner. Now it's a chance for the Lithuanian athlete Slibucci to see if she can get over 181 as well. We know this is her PB. So we'll have to see how she gets on in this event. The youngster here who is so good at so many events in Lithuania. She only managed 13 though in the European under-20s back in July in Estonia. That was a 5,367 points to her name in that event. But she has got a PB of 5,459. 181, not quite today. That's her second attempt at this height for the Lithuanian athlete. This is a PB for her though, so this is quite a tough ask. She'll have one more attempt at this. Just making sure everything is perfect. Hair needs to be on point. Vanen in though, she's up. Third and final time to try and clear. 181 for the Finnish athlete, our leader in this event. Not to be either. So Vanani not over that 178 either. She will finish the competition. Oh, sorry, not over the 181. She has cleared the 178. 953 points she's racked up to go with her 1036 points uh, with her 360 in the 1360 in the 100 meter hurdles so a good morning's work for Saga Vinanin next we'll see Sophie Kreiner of Austria this is her third and final attempt at 181 also be an outright PB for the Austrian. She's got personal best of 180. Oh, so close to that. Lifetime best mark of 181 for Sophie Kreiner, but really solid competition there with the 178. That'll rack up some great points for the Austrian athlete. Very competitive then in this event. Especially because there's only eight athletes. Such a shame, though.
when the Lithuanian athlete asks the crowd to get behind her. There's not many people in the stadium, so she's really going to kind of dig deep and, and kind of find that motivation from within. It's really hard in there without fans. I do feel for these athletes. Oh, 181 again, proving too tough for all of these athletes. Three went to try it. None, unfortunately, could jump over this bar height. It was a tough ask. We were asking for PBs here today from these athletes. So they all bow out on 178. Was what all these athletes achieved today. That was their best score. So two events down now in the women's heptathlon. Five still to go. It's a long way for these girls. Anything can happen still in, in this event over two days, of course. So we'll finish their event tomorrow with the 800 meters. That's always pretty interesting, especially when they've done so much work already over the two days. So we're finished with that event for the time being. They'll take off their spikes and have a little bit of a rest. We turn our attention to the final track event of this morning session, the men's 400 metres. This is heat one. So Lorenzo Bernati there of Italy, second at the European Junior Champions Championships in the individual event and the 4 x 4 So a good summer already for the Italian athlete. Nicolita of Romania to his inside, a personal best of 46.97. Luis Aviles Ferrero of Mexico, he's a Mexican champion and he's got a pretty speedy personal best of 46.04. On his inside is Jeremy Bembridge of Jamaica. He's a Jamaican under 20 champion. We've seen some really strong performances from the Jamaican team so far already this morning. I'm sure Jeremy Bainbridge will be keen to add to that. 45.94, so he has gone sub 46 this season. On his insides, Marrera of Brazil, Roth of Canada, and Samu Conga of Zambia finishing up the lineup in lane one. So this is the men's 400 individual. We've seen some of these in the mixed event earlier. As we touched on, busy schedule if you're a 400 meter runner, oh, if you want to be involved in the team events and the individual events. So first two automatically through to the final. This is the 400 meters, heat one of three. And they're off first time. And, uh, fast start there from the Mexican Aviles Ferrero of Mexico. You can see that vibrant green vest. He's already up on the Romanian on his outside. But Jeremy Bainbridge doing his very best to go with him. Benati not gone out that fast, but could he come home strongly in the in the final straight? But it is Aviles Ferrero in the lead at the moment. Jeremy Bainbridge on his inside. Lorenzo Bernati on his outside. Pretty even running from these guys. And watch out for Sam Conga from Zambia on the inside. He had a strong bend there as he come through to 100 to go. Aviles Ferrero powering, powering away. Just first two automatic. Bernati working hard to get past the other athletes to secure that second place. So Aviles Ferrero automatically qualified, joined by Bernati of Italy. Samu Conga ran a great final 200, 46-49 for third. He will have to wait and see if he is one of the two fastest non-automatic qualifiers, but a great first heat of the men's 400 meters. Yeah, second, third and fourth places all within point two of each other. So tight crossing a line for those three athletes, but there was no denying your winner here looking really strong in those bright green colors that we've already seen in the field events of, of Mexico there. Um, Ferrero never really struggling. The lactic acid definitely didn't get to him as he comes into the, the final 100 meters. Samakonga of Zambia looked pretty strong, but really faded. In the, and then Ferrero just pulled away really easily Bernati Euro under 22nd from Italy took second place there but the Mexican 
happy with that, claps himself. Really enjoyed that one, it looked like. And again, we love it when they have fun as well. It's obviously putting in their best performances, but trying to enjoy the process, that's what it's about. If you're not enjoying it, you're probably not going to run that fast as well because you get a bit more tense, you kind of get a bit more nervous, and you probably don't perform as you hope to or to your personal best. See that result there confirmed for Luis Avilas Ferrero, 46, 45, 63, a national under 20 record for Mexico. And Lorenzo Bernati getting that second place with 46, 28. Personal best there for Michael Roth, but a disappointing Jeremy Bembridge, a DNF. Um, he fell to the track just with 60 or 70 meters to go, so a shame for the Jamaican athlete. One of three athletes that have run under 46 this season, um, but we won't see him in the final. Two more heats still to bring you in the men's 400 metres. One gone, two still to go. We saw the 400 metre heats early for women, but there was actually a disqualification. Kathleen Bob there in heat three. She was in lane eight. Again, on the line. We saw this, didn't we, in the mixed four by four a little bit earlier. That unfortunately isn't within the rules. If you are running on the line, that is a disqualification. So disqualification for Bob and Bisova as well. That was on the other end of things when she got out of the blocks. She just did a bit of a false start there. So two athletes, unfortunately, being disqualified in heat three. But Uko was your winner, 52-3-3. She goes through fastest in heat number three. So this is still the women's 400 meters. Here are all your qualifiers who'll make it through to that final. So Uko, 52-3-3, she's your fastest. Lysovic in two, qualified second fastest, 52-6-3. You can see Mohan, the Indian, she wants to retain that title. India won three years ago now, 53-79 was her fastest time. And you've got McNuff, Jamaica qualified through by right, as did South Africa's pressures, as did Clayton from Canada, all running 54s to make it through to that final. And then the Ukrainian, again, she was the second fastest athlete to qualify, 54-6-5. She makes up those eight ladies who will be featuring in your final later on this week. Ah, we love a little bit of mascot dancing shot, don't we, to brighten up everyone's morning. Approaching lunchtime now in Kenya. So a little bit later than it is for many of you, or a different time for many of you watching all around the world. I think taking this to 15 countries, which is very exciting. A lot of you very interested in all the athletics action which is happening in Nairobi. Heat two now then of the men's 400 meters. We had a national junior record in heat one. What can we produce in heat number two? Really fast athletes again. Jamil here from Kenya. Lane six, 47, two, two is his personal best. Amine from the University of Michigan. From Nigeria though, 46, 40 his personal best. Lane four, Priscilla from Botswana. He's a Botswana under 20 champion in this event. He's strong with a PB of 46, 10. In lane two from Zambia, David Mulangela, 46, 1, 4. Melinda in two and Bondok from Romania in one. 47-27 is his personal best. Eight athletes in heat oh, two. Belgium are the reigning champions in this event. Jonathan Secour, he took the title in 2018 with 54-03. In this one, we're looking out for lane four, Pacella. 
and lane two, Malenga, both athletes with very fast times, 46-1-4 and 46-1-0 respectively. And they're off, okay, we're watching lanes two and four, really fast times. Malenga then, from Zambia, out of the shot at the moment, he'll be entering your shot, there we go, in the green strip. Nigeria again looking strong. Amini from the University of Michigan. South Africa going well as well. Obviously, we'll wait to see exactly where these athletes feature as we come into the home straight, as the saga really unfolds, so we can see who is leading. Malenga as well from South Africa, Norte. But it is Pazella from Botswana who is taking this one from South Africa. He is finishing really strongly. Not tiring at all. So lane four, Anthony Pacella from Botswana takes the victory. 50, 45, 9, 1 from Norte from South Africa, 46, 2, 9. This is how it unfolds then. All the athletes looking pretty similar as we complete the first 100 meters. Looked like Jamili of Kenya was pretty strong with 200 meters to go. Amine from Nigeria really accelerated into that final 100 meters. And then Botswana accelerated. He looked like he was gaining speed, not slowing down as we usually see when the lactic hits with 400 meter races. But it was Pacella taking victory in this second heat. So as Mexico took heat one, Botswana took heat two. South Africa, though, on the outside. Really difficult lane draw to get as well in the heats when you're in lane eight in a 400 meters because you can't see anybody until you get to the final 100 meters when they all come up onto the inside of you and you think, oh, I've got a rose on my hand in this one. Let's have a confirmation of those results then. And that was a great run. And Pacella looking really dominant, pacing it well, personal best, 55.88. And like you said, Rachel, from lane eight, Norja of South Africa, personal best as well with 46.27. And Chamili running personal best of 46.79. So hats off to those guys for really getting that done and, and bringing their best in a championship event. First two automatic, we will add two non-automatic qualifiers as we move through, but we've got one more heat of this men's 400 meters to go. Yeah, producing PBs on the world stage. Possibly again, some of these athletes is their first international competition. So to peak at the right time, when there's a lot of pressure on, is something special. Okay, back to the heptathlon then. This is Vananin, she's our, our leader in the heptathlon event. Of course, this is the high jump, which we saw a little bit earlier. Let's have a look at the standings now then in this event. After two events, of course, let's see where these athletes are currently positioned. So Saga Vanin then, 1,989 points. Victories in two of those events so far, the 100 meter hurdles and the high jump. Sophie Krainer from Austria, currently second, 129 points behind Vanin. In third place from Estonia, Enoch there with one, Eight, five, five, 134 points behind Vananin, who is our current leader. Enoch then, she had a PB, equaled PB, 175 in that high jump. It's great to get a PB. And Vananin, she had a, a season's best in the high jump of 178. So some great performances so far from these youngsters. And, you know, I'm sure they'll have a lot more in their locker as we progress throughout this heptathlon. Five more events still to go they have a rest now and we'll see them back in action in the shot put in this afternoon session that starts at five past four and then they'll have the 200 meters as well this afternoon four events to be completed for these females on day number one and three events on day two for them so a really packed schedule but they know that we know that you guys at home know that heptathlon is it fascinating event and uh, it's going to be great to watch these eight athletes as they come through Let's see how they get on with another few shots of some of those teammates have got a chance to support their their teammates 
some of the coaches as well. But we will bring you up to date with the qualifying of the men's 100 metres. Absolutely. Let's give you a quick update on this then. Tobogo then qualified fastest 10.22. Richardson from South Africa, 10.28. Brume, 10.35, third fastest. And then let's have a look at some of the qualifiers who'll make it through as well to semi-finals. USC from Italy, 10.57. Balushi, 10.59. John as well making it through. And then 10.66 was enough for the semi-finals. Yuri from Finland joins all those athletes in those semi-finals, which we'll see later on this afternoon, Hannah. It's action galore here. But you're going to bring us the third heat from the men's 400 metres. The third and final heat. Two more automatic spots up to grabs. And then we'll have a look at those times and see our non-automatic qualifiers as well. We've seen Williams of Guyana, Azazari already, Barra Sierra Leone, Valo Dudskin of Belarus. That's him there in lane five. We've got some fast athletes on the inside here. Lane four is Taja Ham, Jamaican. He was second in the under 20 championships to Jeremy Bainbridge, who we just saw go out in heat one. So I'm sure Taja Ham will be looking to do fly that flag for the Jamaican team and make this final. To his inside is Life Pile. He went to Tokyo as part of the 4x4 squad. He's got the fastest time in the field of 45.53. To his inside is Bamadele Ajay of Nigeria. We've already seen him in the mixed 4x4. He ran a great final leg for the team to secure their qualification. And finally on the inside, Kimai of Kenya, 46-45, season's best of 47-13. His team didn't do so well in the mixed three day. They were disqualified for a lane infringement. We've seen three of those already this morning. Let's hope we don't see any more. So this is the third and final heat of the men's 400 meters. First two automatically qualify into Saturday's final. The way you look out for live Pele from South Africa in lane three. He's got a fast start, but so has Taja Ham of Jamaica outside of him. Taja Ham is just six. No, he's not just 16. <laughs> Ajayi in lane two is only 16. But the Jamaican athlete there in lane four, Taja Ham. He's eight nuts and ground outside him, but not as much as Life Pile. Life Pile looking in control of this race so far as they come around the final bend with 150 metres to go. Life Pile, 45-53 this year, is the under-20 South African champion, looking to dominate this heat. 50 metres to go for Life Pile. He looks relaxed and he deserves to be because he's going to pull away from this field. It's going to be second place for Kimo. Kimo of Kenya held on well for second place there ahead of the Belarusian Valodudskin, but it was a victory for Life Pele of South Africa. 46, 44, 54. Very well controlled race there. But you could say he was a favourite. He's come in as uh, ranked number one. He's been to the Olympic Games already this summer in the relay squad. He's been part of the world relay uh, relay squad for the South African senior team, uh, but here to contend as an under 20 today. Very experienced athlete, of course, is Pele in lane three, getting a great lane drawer as well. He can see so many athletes, five athletes on the outside of him. He knows where he's placed throughout the race, which possibly helps him out a little bit. He looks so relaxed there. Coming into the home straight, he really does look like he's contesting a training run here. Doesn't look like he's racing. He's eased up well before the line. Our athletes behind him really trying then to get those automatic qualifying spots. Kenya doing so well from lane one. But the story there is Pile from Johannesburg. Super experienced, under 20 champion, but competing at so many national events. And he had a really tough heat as well with Ham, the Jamaican under 20 silver medalist. 
he had the Nigerian under 20 champ, so many national championships. Gold medalists in all of these races. Obviously, we miss our fans. Yes, we do. We wish you were here to spur our athletes on not to be this time out, unfortunately. Our athletes miss you very much. We'd all like to be there. But this is what they're probably doing. They're probably texting all the results, aren't they, around the world and telling them what a great event is being put on so far by all the organizers here in Nairobi. They have done everything possible to make this event happen and it's absolutely happening. It's so great to see. I mean, World Athletics have put on over 600 events in the past year. You know, during these troubling times, that is an absolute testament to the organization. I'm so glad, though, the mascot isn't wearing a mask, Hannah. That is something that I love to see. No mask for the, ma the mascots. He has to stay away from all the athletes, though. I bet the mascot's glad it's just 15 <laughs> degrees today. But here we do have the results at that third and final men's 400 metres. It was a victory for Lyth Pile with 46.55, looking to add the world junior title to his under 18 uh, world title he won in 2018. And Kennedy Kimo of Kenya, season's best 46.05. Those are our two automatic qualifiers across from the third heat. We will look for two non-automatic time qualifiers from those three heats uh, to complete the eight participants for the final, which will take place on Saturday afternoon. No semi-final uh, for these athletes. Um, but a lot of these, we might see them back in the mixed relay final later as well. So uh, busy, uh, busy day for the 400 meter athletes. Yeah, going straight to the final, of course, but... <coughs> Sometimes quite hard, actually, when you don't get a semi-final. Sometimes it's nice to progress through the rounds and really wake up the body, especially when so many of the athletes are flying across time zones. But we're going to go back to the field events and the men's hammer throw. This is Group B as well. There was so much going on in this morning's session. So we're going to bring you up to speed on what went on here then. OK, so we're in the moment. With the no. Hungarian then, Katovic. So these athletes are all looking for 74 metres to automatically qualify or to be the best 12 out of the two groups, A and B. There's 24 athletes competing in, in these men's hammer throw qualifications. So stacked field here. Hungarian with a best of 71.06 heading in to this competition. What did he manage to produce? A lot of the Europeans competing after the Euro under 20s. 66.39 was his best in that third and, and final throw. Finishes eighth then overall in Group B. Have to wait and see if that is enough to progress through to the final. He would have hoped for something a little bit further. All right, Costa now, the Italian. 71.47, his lifetime best. Made a lot of noise as he let that hammer fly through the air. It was over 65. That's one of the markers you can see on your screen. A little bit of an indication there with how far these guys are launching this six kilogram hammer through the air at the Kasani Stadium. 67 31 for Costa. That was what he achieved with that throw. Now let's go to Vipin Kumar of India. We know the Indian athletes love the throwing events, of course. Olympic champion in the javelin recently. So Kumar there, ninth, 62-24 was his best throw. 
And that came in the third and final round. We're obviously bringing you up to speed. These are pictures that we saw a little bit earlier because this event has now finished. But if you haven't been able to be keeping up with the results online, we're bringing them to you at the moment. He's just having a little conversation, it looks like, with some of the officials down there. A little bit of a pause in this men's hammer group B at the moment. That's the South African Vortsman on your screen talking to his coach. Vortsman there with a personal best of 69.04, but we're back now with Kumar of India for his third and final attempt. 62.24 his best so far, looking to throw further in his final attempt. What can he do now? just stumbles after he's launched that hammer. Well, it's below the 65 meter mark. So not where he was looking for. It's not gonna be a personal best, which currently 68.94. See, as we move through this group B of the men's hammer, all these athletes seeking that automatic qualifying mark of 74 meters or finishing in the top 12 across the two pools. We already saw Group A finish in sixth place in Group A was 69.43, so anything around that 69.70 mark might be enough to make it into the final. Let's see Group B, Kumar there, 63.17. Not enough to progress. Next up, we have Zavala Degado. Two failures already. This is his third and final attempt. Not want to leave. What I can imagine is his first junior championships uh, with with two failures. That that would be a shame for the Mexican athlete. Got personal best of 71.87. So if you get close to that 71.87, um, that would be. I think that would be enough for the final. Maybe he's just. Maybe he's just watched Hannah, the um, Mexican athlete, Ferrero get the national junior record in the 400 meters and be spurred on to throw something special in his third round. Let's hope so. I've always thought that it must be uh, nice as a field eventer to see your teammates, you know, if it's at the right moment in your competition and you can, you can relax and... Uh... So we're thinking something possibly went wrong with, with the judging because he's been made to wait for his third and, and final attempt. He's giving a few different signals. He's looking slightly unsure of what to do, but it's possibly being told just to wait a moment. Ah, oh, now he's being allowed to go in. There we go. Finally, he can get underway with his third attempt. I'm sure no problems, that didn't cause any problems for this athlete. Not really a great deal of time wasted there. Okay, here we go. Can he get a distance oh! to his name? Looks oh. nice. No mistakes inside the circle. It goes over the 65 metre mark, Hannah. Well, you can see the frustration there for Aldo Zavala de Gardo. Uh, it was good to get a valid throw in. That's better than leaving with, with three failures, but it looked like it almost clipped the cage on the way out. Um, and that would have taken some of the momentum off it. Or oh, that's an indication that the throw wasn't, wasn't perfect, but his best attempt of the morning. But I don't think it will be a final for Aldo Zavala de Gardo. Said around about that 70 meter mark is what it's taking to make this men's hammer final. This will take place on Friday afternoon. Yep, he walks off then to go and I'm sure speak to someone on his team. Oh, he's running back because there's an event happening, of course, because there's events going on all the time. You have to be really wary as well as a field athlete that you don't impede any of the, the track events. Nikariki then, he is on your screens right now from Romania. 
again, two fouls. This is his third and final attempt. Again, this Romanian athlete will be really hoping he just gets a mark down. In again, Hannah, what possibly could be his first time wearing this Romanian vest. He'll be wanting to do his country proud, himself proud. His coach is probably there, wants to do them proud. So he just wants to get a mark. Let's hope this is a good final round for Nico Ricci. Personal best of 73-25. He would have come in expecting to make this final. Sometimes people think having multiple attempts in a field event uh, makes it easy, but there's nothing like the pressure of a third throw when you've had two failures already. Oh. That is going to be a third and final foul, isn't it? You saw him there. The balance was all off from this Romanian athlete. As he lets the hammer go, he just falls backwards out of the circle, which will mean a red flag will be put up, which will mean, yeah, there it is, indication that he has three fouls in this Group B of the men's hammer. Really disappointing. The French athlete comes over and commiserates him. Nikariki there puts his head in his hands. Again, these are early days of these competitions for these juniors. I'm sure he'll get another chance at an international. But this is the qualification summary then. The Czech athlete, 70-78 with a national junior record. Davide de Costa, Italy, 70-31 to qualify as well. Yakushin there also qualifies for that final on Friday. We're very excited for that one. Moy International Stadium then. Still looking a bit grey, Hannah, this morning. But let's go through the men's 400 metres. Who is making it to that final? So it was a great 400, three rounds of the 400 metres. Those three heats uh, going to the final on Saturday afternoon. Uh, led by the Mexican athlete. That was a great run from Ferrero there, he got the national under 20 record. It was so great for him. Luis Alvarez Ferrero, uh, he was number one then. And we had other athletes qualifying as well. Bonatti of Italy, he makes it through. And then of course we had Pacella of Botswana, Norte of South Africa, Pile of South Africa. So many great athletes who we expected to go through made it through to the final on Friday, Hannah. But our non-automatic qualifier, Simon Conga. Oh, and here we are with the mixed relay qualifiers. Apologies, I was talking about those non-automatic qualifiers and how important it is to run all the way to the line. We see that here for Poland and Sri Lanka, non-automatic qualifiers with those small cues, uh, but those automatic qualifiers led by Nigeria with 3.21.66. And those Indians look strong as well, that Indian team with 3.23.36. That should be a great battle this afternoon. Yes, yeah, so this is actually going to be our, our first medals on the track. We'll have a pole vault final as well a bit later, but this is going to be the first time we see this event and medals given out in this event at under 20 championships. We're very excited for that a little bit later on. We have a bit of a break now. Let's go through the women's 100 meters qualifying then. Masalingi qualified fastest, 11.20. Tina Clayton second, 11.50 there. But so many athletes making it through to semi-finals later on this afternoon. Some of the qualifiers just making it through as well on time. The Finnish athlete there, Persanin, 11.85. She makes it through. Batawangi, 12.01, was the slowest of all those women's 100 meters, but sailing through nicely to those semi-finals as well. Men's 100 metres then, let's go through the qualification summary here. Tobogo, fastest, 10.22. Then we have a season's best for Montaya, 10.40. And then Mexican Gerardo Ponce, 10.60, makes it through semi-finals. As does the Finnish athlete with the slowest time on paper, 10.66. Yuri, he will join all those athletes later on this afternoon. Well, the action doesn't actually stop. It starts again at four o'clock. With the women's pole vault final, the first medals will be handed out in the field events in that very exciting pole vault final, which we'll see a little bit later on. Then we'll have two more finals at quarter past five. 
we'll have the mix 4x4 100 meter relays final, the first ever medals to be given out in that event. Hannah and I can't wait for that one. And then again, another first, the men's 3000 meters. The first ever time this event has been held at 5.45, that event will be brought to you on the track to close out day one here of the World Under 20 Championships in Nairobi. We hope you've all enjoyed session one as much as we have. We'll see you later on this afternoon.